Oh, dear. Like you can shrimp. make any type of dish out of shrimp. Just to cook the dish and add shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> any kind of dish. <laughs> add shrimp. <laughs> shrimp scampi. Okay. Well, start us off somehow. Shrimp lasagna. <laughs> and welcome back to episode 39. Nope. No. <laughs> episode 42. Hey. Well, welcome back to you. Close enough. Uh, hello and welcome to episode 43 of Oh Dear, presented by Bo's Bar and Stage. Coming to you, as always, from Communal Creative Studios in the heart of downtown Red Deer. And hey, uh, we have a double down on this episode because not only is Cilantro and Chive, oh, I don't know, I'm going to say it wrong a bunch of times, the sponsor of our Deer Call segment every episode. Uh, this time, they're also our episode sponsor, which means uh, we're due for another Another interview with owner Riley K, uh, which always means things are going to get weird, uh, and uh, we can't wait. Oh, I hope you bring some beer in for us. It's already in front of us. <laughs> oh, it worked! It worked! He did. Oh, nice. The tie, yeah. The timeline. Uh, anyways, we'll talk about the timeline later. Uh, I'm Ted Emmett. Thank you as always for tuning in. Uh, now, no normally in number forty three, not really anything uh, to celebrate. It's not any kind of landmark, but for us, it is because uh, by the time this episode comes out, December eleventh will be four years years since the inaugural episode of Oh Dear uh, came out on December 11th, 2020. It's been a wild ride since then. Uh, so yeah, there's that happening this episode and it's Christmas time. So uh, once again, it'll be a more holiday themed show. Uh, so if you're listening to this episode after Christmas, uh, like get with the freaking program. Yeah. Or just wait till next Christmas and you can listen then. Oh yeah. Okay, <laughs> good. Uh, no Dustin and Andrew for this one, but uh, F those guys. Yeah. Let's we'll focus on who is here. Uh, starting with the podcast host with the most phone books underneath him right now kevin walsh welcome back thank you are you saying i look tall i was saying you need phone books oh, to I look need tall them. yeah okay no, i think you look taller yeah. yeah well it's good to be back i'm i'm sorry i missed the last one but uh glad to be here with you guys in our festive sweaters keeping his attendance and sitting at the table streak intact uh mr mad gabs himself <laughs> Kevin Strybosch, the athlete. Uh, I mean, you were here last time, but welcome back. Thank you. It's good to be back. We, I think we killed it last time. We didn't really need these guys last time. So. No. We'll I mean, just... it's nice to have them back, but... Hey, it's nice to be back. It's not your... No, that hasn't... Hold on. Sorry. Yeah. That's, that's what I meant. Thanks, yeah. Thanks and for that's coming. And leading into what I have written down, uh, even though last episode was much easier to record and edit without all his bull crap, we still missed this guy. So after your first ever absence, uh, it's pretty good. You have 41 straight episodes. Uh, Ryan Lund, welcome back. Let's fucking go. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> he, he spilled. <laughs> oh, my sweater. Oh, oh I am no. pumped to be here. <laughs> uh, I mean, that accidents happen. <laughs> That's what it says on your birth certificate, yeah. Well, they don't put that on the birth certificate. It was an option, actually. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't feel bad about s spilling. I feel it's about waste. I feel bad about wasting yeah. the beer. Oh, that's oh no! I am so sorry for anyone that saw that that massacre. I think I was more upset with the way you cleaned this up. It is terribly done. Is cleaning up one's messes, yeah. Yeah, as per usual. Yeah. Oh yeah, you didn't Just do a very like good being job. At home. Ted, can I talk to you over here for a second? <laughs> How's recycling paper? <laughs> so, yeah, I am apt to be here. I am ready to go. Spilled about uh, an eighth of the beer, but did it for dramatic effect. <laughs> so, yeah, I could tell you guys are excited to have me back yeah. and Kevin. So, I hope we can add to what you guys did last month. Listen to it. It was fantastic. No notes. Because you didn't listen yet. Okay. But... <laughs> Still, no notes. Yeah. And, uh, all right. Uh, good luck following this. Uh, rounding out our crew of five tonight, likely uh, with some new kind of illness. A coworker, Aaron, what, what are we sick with this time? I was pretty sick last week, but I am fairly decently healthy today. You look good, Aaron. Thank you. You look real good. Thank you. I appreciate it. So, yeah, I'm here and hardly coughing. Here and hardly coughing. That should be like a, a t-shirt. <laughs> here and hardly coughing. Uh, of course, uh, we have to thank Riley from Communal Creative Studios for having us here again. And Ryan is here two episodes in a row, which is a pretty cool. A busy day today for Riley, though. We were, we'll talk about this later. We're out shooting a Lund Employed episode. So, yeah, Riley has seen a lot of us today, probably far past uh, being sick of our shit. But the uh, last thing he probably wanted tonight was to see more of us. But, hey, here we are. Yeah, upgrade those stools. 
<laughs> You'll see that later in the episode. <laughs> yeah. yeah, spoiler alert. From something that happened b- before. <laughs> <laughs> but now, now it's in but the future. But it'll happen yeah. later in yeah. the episode. So yeah. you get it, yeah. I just yeah. got a feeling, you yeah. know? Yeah. Last I, I episode, we did everything all, like, actually in a row. And uh-huh. I thought, the one episode, you're not here. Must be nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I forgot to do this last time, so I'm sure uh, we don't have any return viewers now because they're mad at me. But a special hello to anyone watching on Rogers TV. Uh, hard to believe they haven't pulled us off the air yet, but uh, I'm sure it's coming eventually. I haven't actually aired the whole the uterus episode yet. So I'm sure every time I, I feel like I send it, I'm like, all right, this one's a little racier than the last episode. <laughs> Let me know if I need to edit anything. But uh, if you are a subscriber of Rogers TV, you can catch us a couple times a week after nine o'clock if you're not uh, but you inexplicably want to watch the episodes anyways uh, instead of just listening to us they're also on our uh, youtube page all of the episodes so far so uh sweet baby jesus that was a long intro uh, let's get into the glad game the glad game is brought to you by alberta asian motor works and alberta european motor works family owned and operated in red deer for over 15 years offering full service for all asian and european makes and models and for every new customer in december they'll donate ten dollars to the Red Deer Christmas Bureau. Learn more at aemw.com and aamwrd.com and follow them on social media. So a quick shout out to Mike Pazman and everyone at Alberta Asian and uh, Alberta European Motor Works because I, I heard that the other day that they were doing that, the, the $10 for the Christmas Bureau. So hey, if even now you still haven't got your winter tires on yet and you've never been to Alberta Asian Motor Works or Alberta European Motor Works, you, get, you do a good thing at the same time. So no, no better time than now to, to go check them out. <laughs> Is that Ryan or the I just music? I keep getting so distracted by it. <laughs> Is he okay in the, in that room? There's a lot of yelling. Sometimes I think it's a baby crying and I get a little I bit think it's, nervous. I think he's got some like Ozzy Osbourne type yeah. of thing he's editing. Anyways, so the Glad Game this time, uh, going to be a, a little bit, uh, oh, I don't know what the, the word is. Uh, uh, emotional, sentimental. Well, ladder. all of those things, um, yeah. Uh, self-involved. Oh. Because I think though, uh, because we are celebrating four years since we launched the the Oh Dear podcast, and yes, we had a year off. We still did some stuff, but it's still uh, just so much gratitude. Though now it's been a year since we've come back, and uh, a lot not only a lot of return listeners, but a lot of new ones as well. We still get to do uh, so many cool things around the community. We've started doing Lund Employed, which is a, a new venture with the uh, Red Deer uh, Chamber. So I don't. I just uh, again, I think uh, no better time than the Glad Game to share gratitude for the continued support even though we we kind of fucked off for a year someone said nice things about us on reddit that was not one of us and was unprompted and right yeah that's really nice lots of sane rational people on reddit too hey that was nice yeah it was very civilized and they were really nice and positive and that was nice to see was it one of our shadow accounts (laughs) (laughs) somebody did accuse that yeah oh yeah of course you would yeah but Uh, no this guy brian land said that our podcast (laughs) is really good (laughs) (laughs) i couldn't handle the stress of having like different accounts and having to like sign out and sign in it sounds like it's more i don't think you can handle the work of having to sign out and sign in yeah it sounds like a lot yeah speaking of shadow accounts kevin where's our thousand youtube follower subscribers you were supposed to do like four years ago I started on Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. That's a good start. Yeah. Right. But uh, no, I, I I don't know. And I'm, of course, grateful to everyone here. Dustin and Andrew aren't here, but uh, it's been uh, definitely a lot better too since we've switched to kind of the, the once a month and, and not doing quite as much. But uh, yeah, the year off was great, but I think that the year being back has been, uh, been a lot of fun. And so uh, thank you to everyone who's listening, watching, and uh, everyone at this table. And hey, Riley's here already too. He's hanging out oh, on he the showed chair. Oh, he so. showed up early. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> for the interview he already did but hasn't played yet and yeah. okay yeah but but yeah so i, I thank you everyone uh, kevin walsh uh, the, an original new kevin the athlete uh, aaron lund and uh, i know dustin's listening i don't know if andrew's listening but uh, hey thank you hey and thank you the viewer and the listener i said that but i but oh, not from you but okay. from yeah, yeah. me no, i take it back i was snippy with you for no reason thank you it's been a long year <laughs> <laughs> we've we've spent a lot of time together today. Yeah, but thank you. <laughs> we couldn't do it without you. It has been really nice to get together once a month, at mm-hmm. least. That's been really nice. Yeah, I'm really glad that we fired it back up after the year off. And um, it's been kind of a, you know, less commitment or just let, like less stress. And um, it's a good way to, to come and see you guys and just provide some 
happiness and joy in the community. And um, I'm glad that uh, people are just, you know, enjoying us, listening to us and watching the stupid stuff we do. And we enjoy putting it out there for you guys. So thank you. And thank you for seeing something in me that I didn't <laughs> see in myself. <laughs> No, just thanks to Dustin for never showing up and <laughs> yeah. opening up a spot and yeah. allowing me to have really weird, awkward, raunchy conversations with my friends that we normally have, but now we do it in the microphones. Now recorded, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's not going to come back to bite you in 20 years and you say <laughs> something stupid and then they pull it up off online and then you have to like defend it. You'll be fine. I already got in trouble for calling Erin old and making fun of her lady parts last episode. <laughs> so, no, I was in trouble. It was just... What? You got the gears. Yeah, yeah, I got the gears. Don't talk about a lady's uterus. Yeah, I, I actually had a lot of people ask me like, <laughs> and like clearly I knew like know how a uterus works. It was more that Aaron misunderstood what I meant by saying like dried up and it just, I just went with it. And then we got an episode title out of it. We did. You're and, welcome. And um, if anyone else didn't know how a uterus worked, now they know how it does not work. True. And I turned off my birth control alarm for today just so we wouldn't have this conversation. You are so in So, nine months from now, you might... No. Oh, okay. No, I'll, I'll take it when I get home. Okay. We're good. <laughs> I've got a different alarm set. What are you taking when you get home? <laughs> are we still in the glad game? Or? <laughs> Thank you for having a podcast. Yeah. That's great. What's it, what's it feel like? <laughs> Birth control? Yeah. <laughs> the uterus? Yeah, oh, uterus? yeah. Yeah. I missed last episode, so I think I missed... <laughs> Is it pretty rad? Sometimes. Nice. <laughs> well, Welcome back. Now, what was giving birth like? Was that pretty sick? I would actually love to talk about that. We'll do that in a mummy minute. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, on that note, uh, time to move into our feature interview. As I mentioned, this episode is sponsored by Cilantro and Chive. That's, I'm going to say it, it's in my head. I'm going to say it different every time. That's perfect. All right. Well, it's time for our feature interview. As I mentioned, this episode is sponsored by Cilantro and Chive. Uh, so we have an interview with someone who has been a great friend of the podcast almost since the beginning. Cilantro and Chive. I think I said it different that time. Cilantro and Chive owner Riley K. Uh, yeah. Uh, final podcast recording two years ago was the last time we've chatted with him uh, so we have lots to catch up on uh, so here we go get your get your butt up here Riley come on come on get up to you can sit at the table for the interview <laughs> yeah Kevin get to the All chair right. yeah well, it would not be a Christmas slash anniversary episode of Oh Dear without our next guest. Uh, episode sponsor, Cilantro and Chive, which means Riley Kay, the owner of Cilantro and Chive, uh, with us in studio again. It's been a couple of years, though, so uh, welcome back. Well, thanks for having me. It's been a hot minute. It has, yeah. And this time, we're not ending the podcast or anything. So <laughs> At two in not, the morning. Not quite, it's not, <laughs> not quite as sad. But uh, yeah, welcome back. And it's uh, been two years since we've chatted with you. So I guess first off, like, how is how is the... the restaurant <laughs> yeah plural yeah. <laughs> no it's good it's been a lot of fun uh, the last couple of years coming out of the pandemic have been uh, it's been fun to be able to get back into it and have a good time and not worry about uh, what's coming down the pipe do you uh do you feel like things are like have returned to, to normal yet or do you think there is no normal anymore what, what is normal post pandemic it's uh i mean inflation's rising people's spending habits are, are changing so yeah it's uh it's a mixed bag. But I mean, and not normal though, is I think for you and for cilantro and chive is good because that's your whole jam, right? Any Anything uh, new at, at either location in Red Deer or uh, or Lacoma is just kind of the, the same old, same old. I appreciate that you pronounce it cilantro, like S-O-L. I was going to ask because I... Isn't, I... It so, isn't it cilantro? Well, now you're changing it up. You were saying... Was I saying cilantro? cilantro? Yeah. Oh my God. I cilantro. say it like every day on the radio too. I... <laughs> Do you say it wrong every day? No, I think I say it different every time because I'm never sure. Sometimes I say cilantro. cilantro. Sometimes I say cilantro. I... That just makes me think of cilantro. avocado, which makes me want to punch Dustin in the face <laughs> when he says it. But anyway, anyways, it's not about me. How is that's why I said how is the restaurant? <laughs> No, it's good. We get to have a lot of fun. A lot of different breweries still coming through the doors, different beers hitting the fridge and yeah, having a good time with it. So we got a new menu coming out January 1st. Christmas is coming up. Festive season. So yeah, lots of fun stuff happening. And do we have a nice uh, on the table for uh, like our, our viewing audience at the very least, uh, your beer advent calendar that you guys do every year, uh, very nicely wrapped too. So this is, let's let's say this is a uh, first week to mid-December this episode comes out. Probably too late 
to get an advent calendar at that point, but you guys do this at, at least once a year, right? Yeah, we've done it. This is the fourth Christmas we've done it. We did it once for Canada Day 2, and it's fun to have different beers. We've gone around the province to a few different breweries, picked up some different ones that you wouldn't see in the area, some definite uh, advent exclusives from a, some other breweries. So there's a lot of fun stuff in there. Some stouts, some IPAs, some lagers, some fruited, some blondes. So just a mixed bag. You, you're never going to know what you're going to get. And and it's uh, it's so exciting too, because like I said, they're so nicely wrapped and they're all numbered with the days. But, uh, you know, someone who is 12 or has the emotional maturity of a 12 year old probably wouldn't be able to wait and we'll, we'll open one right away. Uh, Lund, Lund, what did you get there? What are you drinking? Oh, thanks for that intro, Ted. Um, <laughs> I didn't, I was just, I didn't mean you specific, I meant you. Yeah, I know, it's pretty obvious what you were doing there. (laughs) Uh, No, I just wanted to to unwrap one uh, prior to the start, just to show everyone what would be underneath the wrapping paper. So, I had, I was lucky enough to pull a cherry sour, which is... One of the best, <laughs> one of the best sours you can get. So I'm I'm pretty happy with the uh, December third beer I got. Okay, so at least you didn't jump too far ahead. Yeah, I'm not. You a mo- like, I'm not an animal. Can't, anyone who takes like the the 25th tonight is a is a monster. Yeah. Well, the 25th ones are uh, bottles, so they're a little more aggressive. Oh, that's uh, in the fridge. In the anyways, fridge still. Yeah. yeah. They didn't make. I think it was a little too tall, and I didn't want to want to block you. It probably should have <laughs> put it right in front of me. But but uh, and Aaron, like Aaron's already got her eye on one, and I can't. Can't wait for it to be your least favorite type of beer, I, and you have to drink it all. I'm nervous. I don't do well with random choice. Yeah. What's your go-to? I like. Well, of course, I love an O beer, but I'm pretty <laughs> shameless <laughs> plug right there. <laughs> I'm pretty safe in my beer choices. I like blondes. I like things that are light. A cherry sour would have been great. Mm. I don't think there's going to be two of those in here. I don't think so. But I I mean, I like this short one, I feel like has the best chance of being a Diet Coke, which is your favorite thing. No, that's a trick. And I'm too smart to be tricked by a (laughs) wannabe Diet Coke. Typically, the higher IB or the uh, ABVs are going to be in the smaller can. So, it might be safe to stay away from those ones. I'm going with one for our listening audience that's got great little pastel nutcrackers on it. It seems like it's going to be nice. And what date? Uh, what it date is yet? the 12th. Okay. Oh, well, and we're, you know what? You don't have a beer in front of you and we're already talking about it. So, yeah, go ahead. What don't you want it to be? Uh, I don't want to say that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> <laughs> we want to know if you're disappointed. Uh-oh. Some ASMR. Oh. It's got some nice colors. Of, is that a picture of a hop? Oh. Because if that's on there, that's bad news right away. What do we got? Okay. She has no idea. <laughs> I can only see She's P.O.R., so it might be a pork beer. Or? It is a Porter Fandango from Ooh. Analog Brewing. It's a Mexican horchata porter. Ooh. So definitely going to be a little darker. Uh, Analog's put this out a couple years now. Uh, it's got the Mexican vanilla flavor to it. A little darker, a little bit of Mexican spice to it in, in a good way. All right. Well. You got to try it. Yeah, fuck around and find out. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we can still swear on this podcast, by the way. Once people start listening, then we might need to tighten up the language. But uh, but so and <laughs> for now, we're fine. Interesting. Yeah, that's not bad. Okay. <laughs> Take that as a compliment. Oh, yeah. yeah. Look at this. She's trying new things. Yeah. This yeah. is great. All right. Good, Good job, Aaron. Yeah. yeah. Fuck with this. <laughs> The beer. <laughs> oh, that we're gonna we're gonna clip that for sure. <laughs> she was staring directly in the camera. Yeah, too. that is a definition yeah. of a meme. So this is, and it's for people who uh, haven't heard you on the podcast before, maybe newer listeners too. Maybe talk a little bit about the the restaurant, the history, and like I said, the uh, beer calendar is perfect example. You guys just like to do fun shit. Yeah, that we do. We'll have to change up our slogan. I don't know how well that'll work on the side of the building, but uh, uh, we originally opened in. 2012, way back in Pinoca, building sold, lease came to an end. Then we opened up, uh, moved our location down to Look Home, opened up there in 2015. So we're actually coming up on nine years here in a couple weeks. But uh, we opened up in Red Deer in 2021, signed the lease when the pandemic was over the first time, (laughs) and then opened up in the middle of the third level of the uh, pandemic. So yeah, we do a lot of craft beer, a lot of craft spirits, put our own twist on comfort food and just kind of have fun with it. We change up our menu every three months, bringing on more seasonal local ingredients and just having a good time with it. We've got about 9,500 different canned beers in the fridge. In Red Deer here, we've got 22 taps, four non-alcoholic taps 
Look home, we've got 12. So we're always rotating through the draft, bringing in different craft spirits. Big push on whiskeys this fall. So Ooh, look, yeah, having that. some fun. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably not doing anything the whole month. So yeah, I mean, I time can to go drink whiskey. Well, I think anytime is a good time to drink whiskey. <laughs> Do you guys have any like uh, whiskey tasting nights or like whiskey themed nights? Every night's a whiskey tasting night. Ooh. <laughs> So should I think you should have now a Ryan Lund whiskey tasting night and let him Ooh. with zero knowledge of any of the whiskeys let him lead it and describe what what he's tasting or what he thinks people should taste. I think it would be a great night. <laughs> I would, yeah, I would jump at that chance. <laughs> I could this easily. This sounds like a London ploy right here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I could easily bullshit my way through a whiskey tasting. <laughs> I, bu- Yeah, you could. Yeah, I've seen it. I might, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know what, I'll just do it anyway, even yeah. if it's not a London ploy. Yeah. Yeah. Give us an example. Pretend you're drinking a whiskey oh, right okay. now. Oh, that is nutty. <laughs> um, yeah, I think walnut and... This is a darker aged whiskey. It's from an oak barrel and uh, probably from the, oh, I want to say, I want to say Canadian, Canadian boreal forest <laughs> region. Typically go- found in the South Red Deer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it goes down smooth. There's not that burning sensation you get after drinking like that poor man's whiskey. This is a high end whiskey right here. Did I sell you guys? Would you guys try it? That's well done. We'll we'll take that back to corporate. We'll uh, we'll get in touch. Don't don't worry about calling us. We'll call you. Okay. Aren't you corporate? (laughs) (laughs) No, that's definitely my wife. Oh, yeah. Either way, it it ain't looking good. It's a no. (laughs) And the burger of the month, obviously, still going really well. And again, for anyone who who doesn't know, kind of explain quickly what that is. And I don't know if you have a a rough estimate now of us, because it's been two years of how much you've raised. We, uh, we're coming up on seven years now, uh, so <laughs> close. Um, no, sorry, it's been two years. Oh, since two we years since I've you. been yeah, here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, no, Dude, we're I've been sitting here like good. Yeah, yeah. I'm sitting here like what the fuck is so funny? <laughs> good active listening. <laughs> no, it, I know it's been more than two years for the burger of the month. We did ours like three years ago, almost four. <laughs> Uh, we're up pushing $175,000. So we've been able to work wow. with uh, oh. awesome people in our community, creating new burgers uh, around their needs, wants, desires. This month in Lacombe, probably last month by the time this comes out, uh, we're working with Gail Pickett, who's a retired librarian, just the sweetest old Sweetest lady. Um, <laughs> is it a burger that makes zero noise when you eat it? No, like no. crunchy on it. No, so. it is. <laughs> it is the exact opposite. So, we got a burger with cheese curds and uh, tomato sauce wrapped in lasagna noodles and then oh. deep fried. So uh, I'd fuck with that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's an aggressive burger, but uh, the Gail sweetest. Gail sounds like my kind of gal. Sweetest oh, little man. lady. She looks at it and goes, that's cute. And I'm like, that's not how I describe it, Gail. That but, is, how deflating is it when a woman says that to you? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. But no, it's it's super fun. So yeah, it's it's been a great time. Hundred and almost hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. We're so surprised that people are still jacked about every burger that comes out and having fun with us. That's still one of our f- favorite experiences, I think, too, on this podcast and early. And that was a turning point where I thought, all right, we've made it. <laughs> Riley called us to do a burger of the month, so uh, we have arrived. Well, oh, actually, let's let you open. Do you know what, what's under? No. You have no idea how no. they're wrapped. Oh. No, I have no idea how they wrap. Uh, looks like yeah. de- he looks like he pulled a December fourteenth. Ooh, yeah. Snake Lake. Yeah, they're uh, Midnight Swim Schwartz beer. Oh, I haven't I haven't tried that one yet. No, a Schwartz beer is that like um like a wit beer or like a? Uh, it's a little darker. Uh, I've, I've had this one before. Uh, a little caramelized uh, darkness to it. It's pretty tasty, but goes down really easy. I thought you were gonna say onion. <laughs> I thought, I thought, man, caramelized onion in a beer, that's a bold, bullshit <laughs> choice. But hey, I'm not a brewmaster. That's good act of listening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey okay, man, you're, okay. a, you're a whiskey guy. Yeah. <laughs> you might like this one. Okay. Has, does any whiskey ever have like a nutty flavor to it? I don't know enough about whiskey to... Not the good stuff. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah well, I don't, dis- I don't discriminate between the good stuff and the bad stuff. I'll try you it. You literally did in your... Anyways, it doesn't matter. I'm going to put you on the spot, Riley, because it's been almost four years since we did the, the burger of the month. And I think we... I feel like we were on track to be a top selling burger of all time. And of course, the... the 
regulations changing all the time, the in-person dining, no in-person dining. We kind of got shut down a little early. Are we ever going to get a chance? And I, and I promise we won't let Ryan Lund help this time. <laughs> To do like a, a redemption burger. You know, that would be kind of fun to go back. There's been a couple of uh, people that had their burgers cut short because of uh, in-person or takeout or patio dining through the pandemic. So, you know, we might have to uh, do a redemption round again. So, I think we were April last time. So, you got like th- three, four months to decide if you want to have us <laughs> back or not. But I think like, I think I, I honestly probably had like at least eight that month. What is that? $16 I donated. Do you remember what was on your burger? Uh, yeah, I, I remember, I remember most of it. It, it was, I think we, did we decide to go with beef? No, well, elk. no, we had an elk. Did we go with elk? Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, we had, uh, like, uh, Doritos, nacho cheese Doritos, I think. Sweet yeah. chili heat. <laughs> so shoot. Sweet, Good thing you took the lead on this. Sweet media. chili Doritos, <laughs> uh, some mac and cheese. Fried mac and cheese. Oh, some sort of jam. Yeah, there was some sort some of sort Was there bacon jam on that? Bacon jam. I think no, it was... No, ba- it was... Uh, we're going to have to go... We're going to gonna have to call Kim up here and get corporate on yeah. the phone. Yeah. There <laughs> was, but we used, we used the, I think, the Troubled Monk Open Road Dark yeah. Lager right. too for like in the, right. the Barbecue jam. sauce. Barbecue yeah, sauce. That's yeah. what it was. Barbecue yeah, and there's some kind of compote or... It just all came together really, really yeah. nice. Oh, and, it, and a giant onion ring too yeah. on it there was a we, we went double on the fried there with the mac and cheese balls and the, the onion ring it was a good burger though you know you've had a lot of ver- variety in your menu over the years like what even to you is like the weirdest thing that you ever you guys have sold the weirdest thing Ooh, that's honestly to me like something like a dill pickle poutine is one of oh. the weirdest things we've done it's so good too though. it <laughs> is yeah. and and people love it but i was gone that weekend and if <laughs> that would have been ran by me i would have shot it down <laughs> yeah. it so bad and so quick but it's it's one of those things that's just kind of become synonymous synonymous or yep. cinnamon 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 <laughs> cinnamonous yeah cinnamonous uh with what we do <laughs> and people love it so yeah there's uh certain things that i'm happily proven wrong on like, what do you think? Is that a best seller now too, the dill pickle? Oh, yeah. Dill pickle poutine's yeah. typically in the top for sure. I thought dill pickle was going to be like this this fad that lasted for like a, a, a couple of years. But dill pickle chips came out, what, like 20 years ago? And <laughs> Sure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll fact check that. Yeah. And I know what you're saying though. Like, like, and, and I then, already ate a bag of them this week. So, they're still wow. good. And it's Monday. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's only Monday. <laughs> But oh. like you know what I mean? There's like there's like dill pickle everything now. Yeah, it started with. So there should be. Yeah, no, I know it's it's good. I like it too. I just it is kind of weird though. Like the different things dill pickle can be on. Have you had the pickle Caesar yet? No, no, no. We uh, Silver Devil out of Innisfail. We use their uh, pickle vodka in a Caesar. Yeah, and yeah, top seller for sure. Okay. And again, to me, I wouldn't have thought that would be our top seller. I thought bacon moonshine or something like oh. that that we uh, have done. Fun fact: Silver Devil is my grandma's nickname at the nursing home. <laughs> Wow. Oh, Happy ninety second birthday, Grandma, by the way. Does she listen? No. No. <laughs> she won't after that, yeah. I'll tell you. Happy, that. Happy, <laughs> happy birthday to you too, Grandma. Um, yeah, welcome back. Did you did you miss this? You, I feel like every time other than like the first interview we did with you where we were like out on the patio, then you come here and it's just an absolute shit show. It's just a dumpster fire, but yeah. you kinda come to expect that really. Yeah. To be fair, Ted says that about every one of our shows and interviews. So true. At least you guys are consistent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, one thing you got up to in the last little bit here was you joined me on the uh, Red Deer and District Chamber Board of Directors. Yeah, so and I've been. What, to what two, led to that? I've been to two meetings, and you haven't been to either of them. So I'm kind of taking it personal. Oh, I guess that is kind of true. <laughs> well, you ducked yeah. out of the one quick. Yeah, I was there. Yeah. No, I just uh, trying to find out more about what's going on in town and the Red Deer uh, Chamber is a really well-respected chamber and a really well-respected group. So, jumped on board with, with them after Matt uh, Cassidy's asked me a few times over the last couple of years. So, finally caved to him. And- God, that guy's relentless, hey? Yeah. <laughs> Well, and we didn't, obviously, we weren't doing the podcast when this happened, but last year, so just over a year ago at the the Chamber Business Awards, you won business, what is it, Business Leader of the Year Award, which is uh, really cool. I think we congratulated you on social media and stuff, but uh, it's a little late, but congratulations. Well, thank you. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're, not not even the, you're not even the reigning winner anymore, but you still... <laughs> I've already handed over my tiara, <laughs> yeah. so... Yeah, it was 
really surprised by that. I assumed and, and anticipated that it was something for the business. And there's, it takes a lot of people behind me to make me look good. So <laughs> I'm pretty happy to have the awesome team that we do have making us uh, look good. I think if you really want to look good, I'd put people in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> and many of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh boy, has the check cleared yet? <laughs> oh boy. But and that's obviously still been key, right? Is you're you're out uh, not only like you're a member of a couple different communities, obviously Central Alberta as a whole, but then Lacombe in that area and here in Red Deer. Like oh, it's a bit of a juggling act because you also have like the pizza place and I know your wife does all the uh, the merch and everything. Like that's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's it's good. A lot of it, it's it, it all comes down to just having fun with what we're doing and promoting the communities and promoting Central Alberta and just having a good time. Yeah, we've got Moe's Pizza in Lacombe, the two cilantro and chive. Uh, Kim has hometown market too. So she's taking it on the road right now and hitting different uh, markets around Central Alberta and having a good time. And then we're chasing three kids at home through hockey and soccer and gymnastics and everything else that comes along with having three terrors. So no, it's, it's good. It's, it's, it's fun. I mean, we're at the rink early mornings all weekend and Bryn's out there having a blast, having a good time. So it's easy to be at the rink freezing my toes off at <laughs> nine thirty in the morning with some horrible coffee and <laughs> having a good time. Oh, that's the dream though. That's like, that's honestly, that's, I always think about like all the early mornings as a, as a kid. And I thought, man, like I know obviously my parents loved me cause they did it. They also must've hated me cause that's, mm -hmm. that's a love hate. All right. I've been eyeing up this. Oh yeah. Go for that one. You know, this is the tallest one. So obviously I had to go, this is the biggest one, the most biggest bang for your buck. And uh, Ted, what this, date? This uh, beer, you, that was uh, December 6th. Okay. Yeah. It's first week. That's going to be a good one. We have a gray can, black There's top. Boo bass oh. oh. Trees, eh? Yeah. Nipple, that nipple is. action going yeah. on there. Oh. Yeah. Where? Where's, uh, where's the boobs? <laughs> Just going to save this for later, yeah. Just in case the laundry doesn't pay the internet bill. Oh my God. A double IPA, a two-hander. <laughs> oh, it all checks out. Oh. It's well, been a while since you've said that. I wanted hey. a two-hander, yeah. <laughs> so dandy brewing. This Get actually might take me it. three hours to drink. Get I think you could it. do it under three minutes. Oh, Shot, shotgun it. Did Take you not hear the beginning of this interview? That was with like half a beer. <laughs> well, yeah, it can't get any oh. worse. <laughs> <laughs> Holy, smell that. Does that smell nutty? <laughs> no, 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 it's not nutty. That's uh, Ted's in trouble. Well, yeah, there's a lot of... Got to chew that? Oh. <laughs> that's actually, you know what? That's not bad though. I'm not a big IPA fan, especially a double IPA. A lot of, I, a lot of I IPAs. I've made it twice as much, but it is actually, it's pretty good. Oh. Dandy's, uh, Dandy's a great brewery out of Calgary for sure. Kevin, are you that guy at Christmas who opens his presents while other people are opening and they <laughs> don't get to enjoy I didn't theirs? Wanna, I didn't want to wait. <laughs> What do you got? I got a Bob's My Uncle Raspberry Wheat Ale from Manual <laughs> hey, Labor Bob, Beer Company. Hey, Bob is my uncle. I'll take <laughs> That's that. That's true. That looks delightful. Mm -hmm. I'll trade you for a nope. Mexican horchata <laughs> porter. Where's Manual Labor from? Do you know? Uh, they're just outside. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think. Oh, what uh, goes way back. <laughs> Let's talk about two-handers again. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, Manual it's uh, not Fort Saskatchewan. They just... South of that, east of Edmonton. What is it called? Mexico. Cameron. Sherwood Park. Oh, Sherwood Park. Oh, yeah. Sherwood Park. Uh, another great brewery, just relatively new on the scene and uh, having some fun. Wait, you think Mexico nice. is east of Edmonton? <laughs> like, like southeast. <laughs> <laughs> Beaumont area. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, if you look on a map, it's definitely east. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so. Obviously, we're coming up in the Christmas season. Patio season is over, but you've got domes. Tell us about the domes. Great segue. Yeah, yeah we've got uh, two domes on our patio in uh, in Red Deer, so six people can easily sit inside them. It's uh, a little warmer than it is outside and a nice little unique experience for Central Alberta. Yeah, have a good time out there. You can just hang out in the evening underneath the lights and um, your own little private dome or a lunch date for sure. Is it a uh, first come first serve or do you have a pre-book? You do need to pre-book. We have two hour reservations for those. So give our team a shout 587-272-2880 and they'll get you looked after. Can't believe I remember that. I was, yeah. People use phones still. <laughs> like if you couldn't book online at your restaurant, I you, I, you would never see me. Another great selling feature for what we've got going on. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'll oh. see you in another two years. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I'm complimenting that is that you have online booking too, and it's nice. We do, yeah. They also have phones. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, yes. A question and you guys back. also have a new menu coming out on January 1st. We- <laughs> oh, Kevin from the couch saves us. Yeah. <laughs> um, are you able to tease any of that or do you want to keep that a secret? We're still putting the final touches on that, but uh, definitely some big changes happening to our menu. Some uh, some fun things going on. Do you guys so- need any like ideas or any help? No. <laughs> It's already done. <laughs> no, maybe we should have you guys out on the patio on the domes and we yeah. can uh, test a couple of the new new menu items. I know That's... we tried last year right after our fitness challenge ended and it was like it was like minus 35, oh. which there's obviously a, a temperature limit. <laughs> Definitely a cutoff. Yeah, yeah, for sure. What well, would you say is like if it's colder than this? Yeah, minus 20, minus 15, okay. minus 20. It gets a little little chilly out there for sure. But we still have to get you out to count some I know I do have the, to count the pennies. So, I'm thinking... So, while the rest of us we'll are hanging... Out yeah. in the dome, <laughs> we, you got we can hours. get you a bar yeah. stool and you can count those pennies. Oh boy, yeah. Or right. I'll, I'll do it when you bring us back in to do the burger of the month again. Oh, you can't. No, 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 no. You can't no. blackmail. <laughs> you you already owe the penny counting. Do I though? Because I said if we broke the record, I would count the pennies. We didn't break the record. Oh, we'll have to go back to episode what six oh, on the yeah. podcast. <laughs> Check the tape. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to go back. <laughs> yeah. we'll double, to it yet. <laughs> we'll double the viewers on YouTube. Yeah. So how often do you, because I've noticed you do like add uh, items and stuff. Do you have a set time when you do new menus or is it just kind of whenever it feels right? Every three months we change them up oh, with wow. the season. So January, April, July, October. If the math checks out. Is the can you tell us is the chicken and, and yoki staying on there or do I need to get in there and yep. enjoy well, it? Well, I mean you better come in and enjoy it. I'm gonna it enjoy it sure. anyways, yeah. but how much do I need to enjoy it? You should it? probably enjoy it. Okay. If if you're listening to this before January, it is it is very delightful and I highly recommend it. And if you're listening to this after January It was very delightful. It was very delightful. <laughs> you snooze, you lose. Aww. Sucks to suck. <laughs> But I'm sure there's lots of other great items on the menu anyways, so. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh, oh, no. Oh, oh, I, even call, I knew it was going to He called happen. it. He called it. Yeah, he called oh, it. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, right where, right where I usually bring it. Oh, it's, it's a clean break. So, I'm, I'm up to one on you. <laughs> I don't we think only have one. There's only one left. There's not Shh. enough glue to fix that. Riley, you have a, what are the lighter items on your menu for those of us who need to lose some weight? We can get you some crisp vegetables, some water. Oh, you're, you're looking too jolly in that sweater. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> yeah, too much Christmas cheer. All right. Well, so right now, do you feel like you've had the full podcast experience that you witnessed us breaking a stool? That's a high honor. That's only happened yeah, three, three times. times. Oh, three times now. <laughs> And that's why, and I even, I had the not wooden stool and I thought, well, just in case it breaks, I'll, I'll, I'll take it instead of <laughs> Riley. I appreciate you giving me the quality stool. Yeah. Hey, hey, you deserve it. <laughs> but we do, and we've said this so many times, but you've been one of the longest running, biggest supporters of of the podcast. And I know you're probably full of regret in a, in a lot of ways, but obviously uh, we talk about this a lot, but you you and your wife, your family, ever like just obviously community is just a, a huge part of what you do. It is. I mean, we live in such a great area, great community with so many different things going on whether it's events and scenery or like i mean you can get out with your bike clearly i don't nearly enough but maybe can. we can both uh, bike yeah we, we should <laughs> i was just at wheelers E-bikes? and they have yeah. uh they have a two for bike maybe we can get on that oh, and, oh, that'd well, be cute. and hopefully not break it <laughs> we might oh, need to God. wait a few months but you know what i just realized too is every time we've broken a stool it's been our december anniversary <laughs> episode <laughs> So we we might need to take this like this time yeah. off, yeah. Really? Because it was last year was our first episode back that we put out on December 11th. Okay, you broke the stool. Okay, and then the year before that, when when <laughs> Good we ended it, it was the same thing. It came out on December 11th. Yeah, yeah community is a great part of Central <laughs> Alberta. <laughs> we went on a tangent there. Uh, so come back yeah. next year and anyway, you'll see a broken stool. But yeah, community. <laughs> Do we need some wood glue? We're like, uh, no, nah, it's gone. Screw <laughs> yeah, it. It's done. Just no. a straight up fire. No, uh, Central Alberta is our home, and it's it's a fantastic place to 
so cliche, but live, work, and play. There's so many things going on, different events, and especially in the winter too, so many different things happening. Uh, Light Up the Night's coming up this weekend here in, or not here, but in Lacombe. So we've got a little, we'll be out front uh, with the Santa Claus Parade, slinging hot chocolates. We've got the Santa Claus Breakfast and a Grinch tea going on. And so we've got a lot of things happening. And again, it's just so easy to get behind what's going on because there is so many great things happening in central Alberta. Is is Christmas like one of your favorite times? I know it's busy, obviously, but I think you get a, a lot of people coming into and just so much going on around the community. It's it's one of those cliche things. Like growing up, Christmas was Christmas because our parents put so much into it. And now being a parent, Christmas is so fantastic because our kids put so much into it. But in the community, there's so much going on and so many people getting in that Christmas spirit that that really makes it something special. It's like, Power through hiccups. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you want this two-hander instead? <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's going to – you might be driving home tonight, Lund. <laughs> uh, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, anything, too, coming up that people want to take note of? I know you always uh, – we've even been to it. You do like kind of a special menu, I think, on New Year's Eve. Uh, is that happening again? And then anything else in the, the first couple months of the year? First couple months. Yeah, there's lots going on. <laughs> January, February, March. Yeah. Uh, obviously, in February, we've got Valentine's Day going mm. on. We've got our 13th uh, 13th birthday. Yeah, 13th wow. birthday. Uh, February 10th, had to think about that. We've got our fourth birthday for uh, for Red Deer mm. coming up middle of January. Uh, middle of December is our ninth birthday in Lacombe. So, we've got lots of different celebrations going on. Uh, it's January, February, March, a little bit of a slower time in the restaurant uh, industry, but gives us a lot more time to do some fun things and have a good time with it. So yeah, new menu, January 1st, December 1st, we've got new ice cream sandwiches supporting local (laughs) schools hitting the menu too. So yeah, there's always something going on. An ice cream sandwich hits good. It doesn't matter what the weather is. Like, I'll tell you that. And those are like, Mm -hmm. those are, these aren't like your 50 cent school cafeteria ice cream sandwiches. They are legit. They're, yeah. Yeah. I I think we would all fuck with those. (laughs) They are aggressive for sure. Some real stool breakers. Oh, why did we give him a mic over on the couch? <laughs> you said three things the whole time and they're all better than my like 18 minutes worth of talking. Uh, last thing, I, uh, we've talked about this a bit, I think, uh, because we filmed one today. I think we have to get Ryan Lund in there though. I Like what would be better than getting to fire Ryan Lund? Or hire. <laughs> hire and then fire in the yeah. same day. That's uh, that's pretty solid. Well, it doesn't have to be the same day. <laughs> Can be like after busy season's over. <laughs> after get all those tips. <laughs> <laughs> no, we should I, get you behind the bar making some drinks. I got my pro serve. <laughs> you serving whiskey? Yeah. <laughs> Give me your nuttiest whiskey, <laughs> sir. Okay. There probably is whiskey <laughs> with nut flavor profiles. I guarantee it. I'll I was thinking like guarantee. bathroom attendant. <laughs> oh man, those like, are an outdated. Uh, yeah, like the guy profession. that that like has like the perfect. Yeah, remember the, the guy at Catwalk? And, and then you just like like hope you like and don't make eye contact, this, don't make eye contact, you. and then you're obligated to yeah, tip then them you at that yeah. point. Yeah, I dried my hands on my pants a lot because I didn't want to like <laughs> make eye contact and take the paper towel that he was handing me. Like, man, like, good. He always had an assortment of uh, Captain Blacks. Yeah. If I was going to be there for a while, I would like tip him like five or ten bucks initially at the start, at the start and just like make sure he noticed say anything when you and then i knew i was good for the rest you know what of i get free reign yeah and everything right yeah. you know what if you right i think you're like one of your busier nights coming up i think you should just bring him in as a bathroom attendant don't tell anyone it's happening <laughs> are you, you even don't allowed know to have there. those these days yeah why not i don't know or an do. equal opportunity yes. employer. Yeah, yeah, and he's yeah. not—he's not like I oh, wouldn't like, he's not serving food or alcohol or. It's anything. like the Walmart so greeter. No, yeah. yeah, I'll do the girls' bathroom. I think you should just- <laughs> <laughs> see. That's where I think that's there'd yeah, be an issue. Yeah, yeah. there, there might be a line there. <laughs> All right, we'll let, we'll get legal to look into it. Yeah, yeah. corporate will get in touch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so does that like? I guess I got like. Do you have to like adjust all your pricing for those two months? Or yeah, like, we, w- we will. Like yeah, your, all your POS systems and... And in our POS, it's not just a blanket right. across. So, we have to go into each and every individual item and adjust whether it's GST or non-GST. And we've started reading it and through the pandemic, one thing that's really stuck with me is the government makes regulations or makes blanket statements and then the regulations come down afterwards. So yeah. 
we've kind of just left it be until we really need to figure it out and really hoping the Chamber of Commerce sends out an email as to what's going on. Yeah, our that. MNP might do that too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, it's it's such a dumpster fire reading through some of the stuff as to what is and what isn't and why. Yeah. And Yeah, just commenting from the accounting side. Um, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> well, they, yeah. Well, let's, let's see. Beer. Buckle up, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Uh, grab no. your calculator. <laughs> Honestly, like the, the the these rules with the GST, like I get it. It's good. It, you kind of save some money over the holidays. It's good for the average consumer. But quite honestly, for business owners, the hassle you're going to have to go through to adjust your systems yep. and then go back and change it in a few months, let alone like making sure that your GST is reconciled. It's it's, it's going to create more work for the business owners. And then the we'll miss the one item inevitably and somebody and will And CRA will look it. at it. And, and then, yeah, yeah. it's... Uh, I was reading some stats earlier today because Restaurant Canada sent out some information. But uh, apparently when GST came in, restaurant sales went down 11%. So, wow. they're optimistic that restaurant sales will go up with the GST being removed. So, we'll we'll see what happens it's, from that. It's, hey, I got free money. Yeah. Realistically, it's five bucks on a hundred dollars. So yeah. people that are going out already typically have that in their budget to spend, but the people that it will impact the most are the ones that aren't really spending the most. Oh, uh, hey, yeah. in this economy, I think we'll take it. I know. Oh, I'm not telling you anything yeah. you don't know with food prices. Like everyone's <laughs> getting hit. I mean, everyone, people might complain about restaurant prices or anything. They're paying more too. Oh, like man. it just is what it, it is right now. So it's good to see still like uh, businesses like yours uh, still continuing to, to thrive and uh, and survive. And even it's uh, it just gives you uh, such an appreciation for the, the local business owner too, right? Because there's so many of those things that I never think about. Like now I would never go into so cilantro and chive and think oh these poor guys had to adjust all their prices for two months just for gst but like yeah what a pain in the ass yeah cilantro <laughs> did i <laughs> cilantro uh closer yeah closer <laughs> closer that was better your restaurant <laughs> there we go no it's 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 all i mean the restaurant industry is a lot like any other industry but unique too there's a lot of challenges and a lot of things that we we face on a daily and different expectations of guests but we also get to see the best of people coming through our doors, celebrating uh, big milestone events and having a good time and, and hanging out. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a positive for sure. You guys still got uh, lots of room and space available for Christmas parties or, or is it booked we, up? Yeah, we do have a few. Uh, most Friday, Saturday nights are, are booked pretty solid. There's only a few left between now and Christmas, but honestly, January is a great time to celebrate mm-hmm. uh, the, uh, the team as well too, from different companies and different corporations. January, February, March is a bit of a long slog for some, so breaking that up with a Christmas party there is is huge. And I mean, different people, different uh, gatherings, baby showers, bridal showers, and all those fun things. So yeah, it's uh, we got lots of room in January, February, and and you don't have to fight with uh, everybody else for the same day. You guys have a great space in the back corner there, in that kind of separate room. Yeah. It can hold a lot of people, and we've had a lot of you know Chubbs morning. <laughs> breakfast there or uh, uh I think those were lunch club meeting. Yeah. Yeah. You guys well. had breakfast while I was in the bathroom. Yeah. Throwing up. <laughs> you had lunch. And there was later. no attendant in there. <laughs> that was before See, it missed, was so on Missed opportunity. Yeah, so that's not on that's not on you guys, but No, we've got the den, private space. People can uh, book events for up to 30 35 people pretty comfortably. We have uh, closed down the restaurant for for larger groups for 120 or more. So nice. yeah, we're uh, we've got a few different spaces that we can have some fun with. Perfect. Well, we we won't keep you much longer, Riley. Again, we uh, appreciate. Uh, I should say while I'm looking at the the cans of O beer, we really appreciate you at Cilantro and Chive and Moe's uh, carrying some some O beer. I was there uh, when you first started carrying it at at, at your restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Cilantro and chai. Yeah, okay. That's close enough. The last Cilantro two have been Cilantro. spot on. Yeah. yeah. Either way, uh, you know, and it felt really weird. I'm like, I'm going to look like the biggest like douchebag ordering an old beer, but I had I had to do it. Uh, but we really appreciate that support. Of course, you do our, our deer call every week, giving away the gift cards. So uh, thank you for coming in and on a little bit of short notice too. And uh, we'll see you next year, the next anniversary. Yeah, party. two yeah. years from now, we'll, we'll be back. <laughs> Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, I'll see you at the whiskey tasting. <laughs> <laughs> Done. <laughs> All right. We've got to check with corporate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>
All right. Well, that went exactly the way we thought it would. Uh, thank you again so much to Riley Kay from Cilantro and Chive for joining us and just the continued support of the podcast. Uh, still hanging out with us as well. So uh, don't don't say anything bad or do. I'm not the boss of you, man. Yeah. I'll, hey, I'll say whatever comes to my mind. <laughs> oh, which is? Cilantro. <laughs> Okay, but uh, yeah, thank you again, uh, Riley. We can't wait to go in, uh, try out the dome. And I am, I promise you before, oh, I don't know, I'm not going to promise when, but I will get in there and count the pennies. It's going to happen uh, eventually. We just need more people to push me on it. That's the problem. Uh, all right, so Lund, last week you were not here. Uh, so we the, the, actually, the athlete did a pretty decent job of filling in for you, uh, doing sound effects. He didn't try to be you either. He did his own thing. Good. But now that you're back, Good. it's time to head in to shoot in the breeze. This is one of my top 10 favorite segments that we do. (laughs) (laughs) Shooting the breeze. You, might, you should be like an ASMR person on TikTok. Yeah, I don't know if I... I don't know. I, I've been talking about getting on TikTok since we started the podcast. For four years, and yeah. I haven't... Happy four-year anniversary that's talking about <laughs> I just don't want. TikTok. I just don't want the Chinese government to have access to all my data. Oh, they have all the errands. Yeah, I'm uh, on ballet point shoe TikTok right now. It's delightful. I watch hours about point shoes every day. Mm. I'd make fun of you, but I just spent like three hours on the weekend watching a guy remove hornets' nests. So yeah, oh, that's always a delightful yeah. side. Yeah, TikTok's uh, great. It finds what you didn't know you wanted yeah, I don't and know. shows it to you. I don't know if TikTok's for me. I think we should find out. <laughs> I I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> Instagram is bad enough already. Ugh, Instagram is dead. <laughs> Come to TikTok. Have we done that? No, we haven't done that. The ad read yet. No, sorry. Go ahead. <coughs> Achoo. <laughs> Did you just ride You're the riding horse? the horse, yeah. All right. Shooting the Breeze is brought to you by Recovery Lab, home of Central Alberta's only cryo spa. Recovery Lab is dedicated to your health, wellness, and recovery, offering a wide variety of services, including physiotherapy and fascial stretch therapy. Head to myrecoverylab.ca to book your appointment today. So I know I don't know if any of you have ever done a, like a, had a massage and then gone in the the cold tub, the cryo mm-hmm. tub right after, which is normally not bad. I did a, a very delightful hot stone massage, but I thought of like, oh, let's change it up. It uh, was very nice. Didn't think about how like the difference of having all the hot stones like direct contact with my skin. I had, I'm sure I've been in that cryo tub like a hundred times now. By far. The, the worst one yet. That's masochistic. Yeah, that was not, it was not well planned. <laughs> no. But I highly recommend both, just separately. <laughs> I've never had a hot stone uh, massage. Well, once you get a job and have benefits, you should go oh. do it. Or just do it anyways, because it's worth it. Did you recover all of it or do you, like 80% of it? <laughs> <laughs> Are we talk, we're talking about my 100%. Oh, that's, that's good benefits. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's really good benefits. Um, let's talk about though uh, really quick because this will still come out in the beginning of December. Uh, it's always a, a fun time. We talked about this with Riley, the interview that has now already happened. Yeah, I remember. Uh, just lots of so much going on with Christmas, but uh, I know Kevin uh, Walsh. I don't know if you've been downtown with the kids yet, but uh, you know now downtown's all lit up. Uh, just lots of fun stuff going on uh, in Central Alberta all through the Christmas season. We have to remind you, of course, for Bows, uh, it's winter lust there again. So it is uh, every year too. They step it up, but it is the most Christmasified place, I think, in central Alberta. No, oh, it's beautiful. They do an incredible job every year. And like you said, they, they're they always topping themselves. So Yeah, when City Hall, um, downtown Red Deer, when they do all their, you know, lights and stuff, we always go down there definitely a couple times a year. Um, another good one to check out, Polar Express, so to Stettler. Yes, yeah. Um, that's a great train ride if you have younger kids. Well, it's been like three years since we've done that, I think. Yeah. Yeah, my kids, we went, we skipped it last year and today on the in the car they're like when are we doing the polar express we have to go back and so we've already done it two or three times so it's a it's a great outing for sure uh, yeah lots lots of christmasy things happening is anyone i think today actually i just i dipped a little bit into the christmas music because mm. the time of recording we're like a month away from christmas is it like is it was december 1st the appropriate date like i don't know yeah for me i i try and wait till december just because like all of the like in November, everywhere you go shopping, mm-hmm. you're already bombarded with all the Christmas stuff. And that to me is a little too soon. Mm-hmm. So I like to push the Christmas music to at least December because one month of Christmas music 
is enough. It's plenty, yeah. 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 When some, at least like I know our radio station only plays like one or two Christmas songs an hour, which I think is perfect. I think it's one until we get closer to Christmas. But there's, especially in Calgary, there's some stations that are only Christmas music. And I love Christmas music, but it's too much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was scarred in uh, high school. I worked at Toys R Us and Bauer Mall. Oh. And like November 1st, Christmas music on loop started. And so since then, I've been mm-hmm. scarred. Before Remembrance Day? Yeah. No wonder they went bankrupt. Yeah. <laughs> Only in the U.S. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess they, they are still around. I guess we can't count on a Toys R Us sponsorship anytime soon. Uh, <laughs> it's not on the budget. Yeah. But, uh, you know, yeah, we're in the Christmas spirit. I think we're going to talk more about Christmas when we get into Deer Call. I want to remind everyone again, uh, tickets on sale Thursday, May 8th. The Oh Deer podcast uh, for the second time in uh, just over a year presents Wannabe, a Spice Girls tribute. Uh, my goodness, if you don't have your tickets yet, I know everyone's kind of last minute, but at least mark it on your calendars. Take the Friday off. Uh, it'll be, it'll honestly be at least in Red Deer, one of the most fun nights you ever have. Should be a national holiday. <laughs> or a local holiday. I'm fine either way. They just, they just bring, bring the noise. They bring the yeah. energy. They bring the uh, attitude. They, they bring the... Joy. Joy. Like, did the Spice Girls have a certain word they used for that? Girl power? Yes. <laughs> they bring the girl power. Yes. Yes, that's what I was looking yeah. for. That's they didn't. They never really said that very much. It wasn't yeah. like a prominent part of their whole brand. So it's fine that you didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, I know. I picked up on it yeah. though pretty quick. <laughs> pretty quick. Uh, but yeah, we hope to see you there again. Going to be such a fun night. Hopefully, can get JD the DJ back to to pump up the crowd again. But uh, yeah, Bosebar to get tickets for that. Uh, now Dustin's not here again, but because I'm part of this committee, I'm going to mention it anyways. I think both Kevin's are already a part of this, but something really cool uh, that. Dustin is spearheading uh, with the Outreach Center along with the Hockey Alberta Foundation. Uh, I think, I, I don't know if this has really been done in this scale before, but a huge corporate pickleball tournament on Friday, January 24th. It's at Westerner Park and then Bose Bar and Stage uh, presented by, uh, you may have heard this name, a great guy in our community, Nathan Giesbrecht uh, from IG Private Wealth Management is the presenting sponsor behind this, but uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. It is uh, geared towards more corporate. It's supposed to be a fun uh, a day of pickleball uh, so you don't have to be be good at it at all uh, proceeds from this are going to the outreach center and hockey alberta foundation um, uh, teams of two i uh, mean if there's three of you and you swap out from game to game we don't really care but uh, you can buy uh, just a team of two uh, you can do a, a court sponsorship as well which will get you uh, two teams of two for your business uh, the court sponsorship and also uh, some extra tickets to the after party at bow's bar and stage which is going to be uh, food and energy entertainment uh it's, it's gonna be a long day but i think i i'm gonna put you on the spot but both kevin's i think you're coming to this right i sure am i'm signed up i'm uh, i got my my teammate he doesn't know it yet but i picked yeah. him <laughs> yeah and and you know for a work thing it's a great networking event and i think there's going to be a lot of business people and just good citizens of red deer there to to hang out all day and night and so i think it's a unique event mm-hmm. it's something really different and cool and i'm looking forward to it yeah i'll be there as well and i don't have a pickleball racket or any equipment. But everyone running who shoes? signs up is going to get a pickleball racket. What? Oh, yeah. wow. Ooh, is that breaking news? Sick. Well, I mean, it's- I guess so. Yeah, it'll be part <laughs> of the... Yeah, I think... And it's something... I mean, we should communicate it so people don't go out and buy... I 100% buy was going to go yeah. buy one, so... I do have some thank extra you for ones that. as well. But no, you, it, it'll come with like a swag bag and a, a commemorative pickleball racket that you can use that day. And did you have a partner yet? I think so. I don't know. We... You know, I think you, we're signing up a bunch of teams. Okay, there, if so. anyone does need a partner, I know a former universe. Uh, was it Alberta badminton champion, provincial badminton? Uh, champion? Just we're just city champions. Oh, okay, <laughs> I did win uh, provincial bronze uh, in college, though. Okay, so, uh, mixed doubles. Isn't it funny how you win the bronze but you lose to get the silver? Yeah, medal? I know we yeah. purposely did it that way. <laughs> yeah, you wanted to. Yeah, couldn't take the heartbreak of losing <laughs> the gold medal game, so we yeah. threw it and then won the bronze. But uh, speaking of Ryan Lund, he doesn't even know this yet. But uh, during uh, lunch, lunch will be served too. There's going to be a celebrity match on the on the main court, commentated by Ryan Lund. <laughs> I'll be there. I'll be there to, to, to help you along. But you'll be more of the yeah. color commentator. This is this is news to yeah. me. <laughs> we wanted to break the good news. I mean, I could be a surprise. Uh, uh, yeah, I can do it. If I, he can do a whiskey tasting, he can oh, do, do pickleball. Is there going to be whiskey at the pickleball <laughs> tournament? Uh, yeah, we'll see. 
people, you may need it to listen to your commentary. But no, it is uh, huge props to Dustin. This is uh, something him and I kind of talked about for uh, a few years now, and he took the initiative to start it. Part of why he's never here anymore. He's got uh, a whole lot going on. So you can email him at uh, Dustin at Outreach.ca or just DM us on, on Instagram or Facebook or whatever for just more information. Sure. Or come on down to dear. Come on down. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Did I say it wrong? Yeah, you said Dustin at Outreach.ca. Oh, Dustin at CAOutreach.ca. It's kind of a confusing email address a, a little bit. But anyway, it is going to be a great event. Uh, something to, to do with a, a couple people or a lot of people from your office. But uh, the hope to see you there. All right. Well, more, more uh, I guess, uh, shameless plugs here while we're talking about it is a time of year, too, where I think, uh, you know, a charity is big. There's lots of different uh, places that you can uh, donate to and support. But Lundy, the, our annual Chubbs loser pool starting up in January. So yes. again, if you want to be a part of that, uh, but you just pick uh, the loser of a one, a one NHL game every Saturday. It's always a big pot. It's a lot of fun. And same, they just DM us to, to get we'll, in on uh, it. We'll post the, uh, all the rules on a online poster. We'll get uh, Odier to share it. So anyone that fo- follows us on Insta can uh, read all the rules there. And hopefully we can have the biggest pot yet. I think last year, I think there was a total of uh, seven grand up for grabs. Towards the winner and then seven grand yeah. to, to charities. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, it was pretty big last year. And I think there was a winner after like nine weeks. Like it, it was a lot quicker. It was for quicker you, yeah. last year. Um, so some sometimes it goes like seven weeks. Sometimes it goes like... Into playoffs. 18 weeks. So, you just never know. Uh, So, that's coming up in January. And then we rescheduled uh, and changed our Wine Survivor, which was going to be in November. A really fun event we do every year. Now, it's a gift card Survivor. So, we can do uh, gift cards to lots of local businesses. I think a little more. We've done the wine thing. And I don't know. I think gift cards are a little more useful. But it's uh, tentatively March 1st at the gutter. Uh, Same thing. You can watch for it eventually. Uh, Let us know if you want to sign a team up. But I think we made close to 10 grand for charity last year so it'll be nice to beat that this year too all right last last thing to shoot the breeze about as we all know there's a couple things but uh, <laughs> uh same thing <laughs> this, this fucking double ipa oh i don't My think God, it's i don't think it's a dip up buddy well also i just well and i suck no i didn't say that either <laughs> well, i don't know what you <laughs> that's so brilliant i love that Aaron, we should hang out more often <laughs> Anyways, uh, lots of Red Deer uh, Chamber stuff to talk about as always. But I think, Lun, we owe a big thank you to the Red Deer District Chamber again for having us out uh, two years in a row now doing live interviews. Uh, and it is on his, it is actually one of my, my favorite gigs of the year because we, you know, you watch the, the MC, uh, Haley Porter, who it was her first time too. You may have seen her in the, the band Fun House, a really fun cover band. But uh, uh, she did a great job. But you, you got to be a little more like you got to play a bit to be the MC, we just show up. We, lo- we find out who the winners are a little bit ahead of time, and then while they're presenting, we quickly talk. Okay, let's do this and that, and then we do it. But it's it's awesome. It's a fun time. Yeah, it's 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 perfect because there's no there's very minimal prep work. We I think we get the list of the winners like the day of, so you can't really prep a whole whole bunch ahead of time. And basically, while the show starts, that's when me and Ted are basically going over <laughs> what we might say, and then even that doesn't even follow through now pressure makes diamonds i mean yeah plan too far ahead it's you don't want to sound you don't want to sound too scripted people can read right through that you want to be uh (laughs) Uh, authentic. Yeah. You I don't think genuine. anyone thinks anything we do is ever scripted. Good. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Good. Because it's not. I knew you were going to say that. Okay. Most of it is not. <laughs> yeah. It's an honor for us to get to go do it. We've already, we'll see if it changes as the year goes on, been invited back next year. But we went from the back room pre-recorded to out in the hallway. That's where Riley got to do the interview with us, but live to like beside the stage. Do you so think, like this year. Do you think next year? I think next be year be on stage? the stage and then the year after will just be gone nice done nice but it was was nice to actually hear a bit of response from the crowd this time and know to know if a joke landed landed or not because when you're out in the hallway you just you you have no idea and you could be bombing all night not even know and just keep going along that same train of thought but it was nice to hear some some laughter this year so yeah i mean uh it's a it's a really fun night and for anyone that hasn't gone uh if you know anyone that's nominated it's a it's a great way to support your friend or family member or business that you like and they got a good they got a good spread there 
the uh, the food before and after was fantastic. Yeah. I mean, that's really why we go, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's how we get paid too. <laughs> yeah, we should actually start charging money. <laughs> we should we should start making money for the podcast. Right. Okay, I'm gonna write that down. Okay, yeah. good. <laughs> New Year's resolution. Yeah, and hey, maybe maybe literally any of the rest of you can actually be part of it next year. We're not that funny. I'm busy. Oh, I'm busy. <laughs> I guarantee you while we were in the middle of doing the, like doing the the interviews and stuff you were probably You're like pr- eating chips yeah dill pickle chips and watching tiktok yeah busy yeah. busy yeah so busy no it's fine some people <laughs> care about the community some don't whatever <laughs> <laughs> yeah. some people give back some people eat uh, dill pickle chips so whatever charity yeah. starts at home and i was taking care of a baby probably that baby can probably take care of itself by now hey yeah. honestly she's pretty independent yeah. yeah i mean you have been taking care of her and she's off biting people and getting written yeah, up so she's clearly. having problems <laughs> <laughs> she gets too excited with her little friends sometimes and... maybe because maybe her mom's on tiktok all day <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> kevin you're gonna get yelled at again. <laughs> uh, well, we'll move on. Right. Uh, speaking of the Red Deer Shame. Chamber, after a bit of time off, we mentioned this. Happy to say that a new episode of London Employed, uh, by the time this episode comes out, uh, should be uh, or at least close to being available to watch on YouTube. I'll tell you what, you can say a lot of things about Lund, but you can't say that he's not open to new experiences and trying new things. Uh, after five swings and five misses, uh, he tested the waters as a gas station attendant at the new Tempo Gas Bar in Gasoline alley and uh yeah as per usual it was definitely it was a time yeah the weather was uh not fantastic today but we battled through it and uh i got the job done now whether or not whether or not i got the job you're gonna have to tune in Mm. to find out but yeah no spoilers uh, yeah i showed up did my time made an impression what is the impression of the way you left in the snow and you biffed it? <laughs> the gas there, was one, there was one accident <laughs> that was not scripted at all. Between and cars or you? Uh, me. Just me. Okay. Me and my body. <laughs> and my back. <laughs> my, oh, never mind. We're not going to jump into song lyrics there. <laughs> <laughs> some mm-hmm. people, some, if you know, you to know. To the window, yeah, to the wall. Different, different oh, different wall. Yeah. My neck, my back. Never oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, long story short, yeah, it was it was fun. I mean, there's a lot you don't know what happens at those at those convenience stores slash gas stations, and there's a lot. Uh, a lot of entertaining things you can do there. Yeah. So I'll leave it at yeah, that. Yeah. Once again, a huge thank you to Tempo for inviting us out. And a reminder, if you're not caught up on all the episodes of London Employed, you can head to our YouTube page uh, to watch the first five, five episodes as well, which I highly recommend because they're delightful. Yeah, they're pretty good. They're pretty, uh, they're much better than I thought they would be. And 99.9% of the uh, kudos, congrats, uh, yeah. credit goes to Riley. He, he's the one that videos it. He's the one that edits it's it he's the one that uh gives us direction so i'll give i'll give ted one percent i'll give riley 98.9 and i get point uh, I, don't know. I get point i get some credit for showing up yeah. give me some credit I for showing I, up. I i we say this every year i give you I, i'm gonna give you way more credit than you're giving right. yourself but oh thank you but very you, much. you should keep the same numbers for yourself so you look humble yes yeah. yes because i'm a team player for anyone that's hiring out there, uh, I, I obviously give credit where credit is due. Uh, I'd like to see others succeed. Would be willing to work for a decent paycheck. Are you looking at the camera or Riley? Right now? <laughs> Either one eyes right, on Riley, the camera, one eyes Riley, Riley from that restaurant. Right. Yeah. It's good with two Rileys. <laughs> Um, but yeah, if you, yeah, once again, if you think you would like to give me a shot, I'd love to try it out for a day. We'll bring the video cameras. We will respect most of your wishes <laughs> and make some magic. So come visit us down at Odeer <laughs> uh, or DMS, one of the two. Right. What, what skill did you improve upon most today? Today? Yeah. Grip. Grip. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, speed. You know Sweet. what you did after we watched the, the absolute shit job you did cleaning up your beer spill? You did a really good job of mopping. Yeah. Did clean the inside and the outside, which I didn't know the outside had to be clean, but yeah, I know they were nice to me today. So yeah, it was a lot of fun. Thank you again to Tempo uh, for having uh, us out. Uh, head to our YouTube page now to check it out. If you're not caught up in all the episodes of London Employed, I highly suggest watching all of them as each episode is a delight. And uh, I, until recently, I didn't know there was a, a Tempo in Red Deer and they actually, they get their fuel from Central Alberta Co-op. So uh, a lot of local ties there and their grand opening, if you're listening to this on time, uh, is 
Friday, December 13th. Uh, if you're going by, you happen to need gas that day, that's the day to, to go and check it out. I'll be there, for, I don't know, I think from like noon to four, I don't know my schedule, but I'll be there with the, the radio station so you can say hi and you uh, might even see Lundy there hanging out, but probably just for fun, probably not as, as an employee. Yeah, but maybe. <laughs> Um, one thing, one thing I did actually learn today is they sell alcohol at the convenience store now. Mm, yeah, that's I didn't, a newish uh-oh. thing. That's yeah. a new rule in Alberta, I guess you can do. Cool, I didn't know that. Like you got to buy it after like nine a.m. Nine a.m. See. Oh well, what, so, what's the point? Yeah, but uh, yeah, I had no idea convenience stores could no. obviously get, get licensed and all yeah. that stuff, but <laughs> no idea that I, I knew Ontario was doing it. But, yeah. yeah, all right. That is a cool tip. All right. Well, uh, good good breeze shooting, uh, as always. Uh, oh, and have to say a thank you like we always do uh, no, because of the advent calendar. We have been drinking old beer tonight as well. There's one. Thanks, Walsh, for keeping a little bit of branding on the table there and facing it towards Kevin and not the <laughs> camera. <laughs> uh, but uh, as we mentioned, talking with Riley, lots of uh, local places have been carrying the beer, which is uh, which is awesome. Bose, uh, Cilantro and Chive, Moe's, uh, Pizza in Lacombe, and The Gutter as well and a uh, pretty cool thing they uh, have a, like a Christmassy beer I know low hanging fruit has become like one of our favorite beers ever well now they have snow hanging fruit a cranberry sour so if you're I'm sure it's going to sell really quick but if you're by there and you see it uh, I would get it while you can they like their their play on words over there. That's eh? that's why they're my type of place. Yeah, yeah. I, that, I believe that. Yeah, no, they're they're just really good at taking the puns, bottling them up, and they don't have any bottles of beer there. <laughs> but I went for it anyways. So hey, thank you, Red Heart. <laughs> All right, so uh, Lundy, uh, last time too, you actually did get replaced as a sound effects guy by a, a real deer call. Okay, that Andrew brought in, and I can tell you right now, and not that we knew before like what we were listening for you were not close like never no never at least not this particular kind of deer call that uh, andrew was using but we still missed you and we want to hear the ryan lund brand of deer call as we head into a segment called deer call The best part is how you like hunched your, like you leaned into it. You had a power stance for that. Well, yeah, I got to pretend I'm like on all four, <laughs> like a deer. And then that way your diaphragm and your vocal cords, cords get ex- extended the right way. So, I mean, I could have easily looked up what a true deer call would have been. Like, what, did he do a Canadian deer or uh, American deer? It might have been Russian. Yeah, that's probably that's yeah. probably why. It, <laughs> did it, did the deer call have an accent? <laughs> You'll have to listen. Yeah, huh? vodka. <laughs> <laughs> I will crush you, Rocky Four. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Ivan Drago, probably one of the best villains of all time. Yeah, uh, Dolph Lundgren. Oh. So talking about Christmas movies. Yeah, Christmas. Yeah. Well, let's get into to deer. I I mean, it's we, we've already talked about a lot. Oh my God. You know what? Let's just let's just do the ad read. Deer Call is brought to you by Cilantro and Chive, home of the Caesars that eat like a meal. Stop in at either location in Red Deer or Lacombe for the burger of the month and support a great cause. With two dollars from every burger sold going back to the local guest chef's charity of choice. Cilantro and Chive, your favorite new destination to meet with family and friends for food, drink, conversation and fun. It's just that simple. All right, so let's get right into it. I can't, I'm, I don't know, my if my like face is getting more tired or my tongue is getting bigger as the night goes on, but I just can't talk. So let's get right into it. Uh, as always, uh, with Deer Call, we post a question on social media. I ask you to comment, and then every time you comment, uh, you uh, are entered in the draw to win one of two $25 gift cards to Cilantro and Chive. And this time, of course, this time of year, I don't know if we've ever actually, I know we've talked about it. I don't know if we've asked it as a Deer Call. Uh, this one is uh, very open to debate, uh, but also going to have a lot of duplicate answers. The best Christmas movie of all time. Uh, one of our winners, Shelby, but also uh, Casey, Becca, and Heather all said The Santa Claus, which is like, that movie is almost 30 years old now. That's insane. Hmm. I mean, that's like top two, top three for me. It, yeah, it's a must watch. I watch it probably at least five times every year, especially with like with kids now and stuff mm. and they, they like it, but it's kind of, it's an old movie obviously to them, but I mean, it's still, it still holds up. 
It was very over confusing 30 years. though as a kid because it's like they're like half of the people are saying Santa's not real and the other half are saying it's real and I don't know what to believe. Uh, yeah, but you know what? There's maybe we'll we'll talk about some newer movies that mm. have come out, but I watched one last night we had family movie night. And we watched our first Christmas movie of the year. Was it's it a newer hot it's a newer one. No, I'm not oh. going to spoil it. It is a newer one, but same premise like one kid doesn't yeah. believe in Santa and one kid does. Like yeah, what so side it, it, what yeah. side do you want to be on? Really? But like in the Santa Claus, where did they think their gifts were coming from? every year the people who didn't believe in santa well they were on the naughty list they, oh, they didn't yeah, get, they didn't oh, get okay. the gifts so you have to believe to yeah. get the gift so i guess it's like you're i should have consulted you for yeah. all things christmas yeah you, the very no, if you have any questions just ask <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll share everything i know um i've and, actually got a. I <laughs> didn't want to say this but i actually have a new lun employed at the north pole <laughs> And it's, I'm fingers crossed. We're trying to get the schedules to work out, but it's busy time of year for, for oh, the big, for the big guy. Oh, so sense. yeah, we're trying to get in some, sometime between the 20th, the 24th, his agents are involved. My agents are involved. <laughs> it's just, I'm hoping this is the year though. Cause we've been talking the last three Christmases and I've got, I've got we've a been good talking feeling. about London employed for two and a half years before it even was an idea. Yeah, no, I, I like to look into the future <laughs> and plan ahead. You know me. Yeah. 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 Um, our other winner, Bree and also, so Leanna and Cheryl said, I think this is honestly, this might be like the last true like classic Christmas movie too, is Elf. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know if, yeah, that's a good way to describe it. I don't know what's newer that could be considered yeah. like a classic. Like really, it, that's such a good, there's so many good like one-liners in that movie. Yeah, it's, and it's, yeah, it's, it's so, I think, and it's Will Ferrell at his peak, but we were talking about this the other day, like, there hasn't been a movie, I don't know if you could think of a movie since Elf that has been as popular, and it's, like, constantly on the top of people's favorite movies list. It's been almost, like, 20 years. Stop aging us. You're aging yourself, like, you're doing great at Right now. Don't worry. There. Kevin made me say it. Yeah. <laughs> I guess uh what about what about the Grinch? Whoa, 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 whoa. Is that one is that one newer whoa, whoa. than Elf? Oh. Well, Grinch is an no, old it's before. Well, like, wait, like the lot uh, the live up. action. Yeah. It's coming up. Yeah, well. Too. Stop talking in the yeah. future. Uh Mayor Ken, Jill, Nathan, James, Christina, and Jade all said a movie that I, I actually don't like. Christmas vacation. What? I, it's just not, I don't know. I don't think it's that good. It's good. I guess I shouldn't say I don't like it. It barely even be top 10 for me, I think, for Christmas movies. You're a monster. I that know, is my number one. It, yeah. I think it'd be up there. For, it'd probably oh. be like between five and 10 for oh, me. Oh my God. It's just, I don't know. There's just other movies I like more. That's all. I, huh. I can understand why so many people like it. But. Kev, you're taking offense here. Let's hear what you have yeah, to say. Yeah, no, that's one or two for me yeah. with Elf. For sure. Yeah, but you haven't even seen like Dazed and Confused, so you don't get to talk That's about not a movies. Christmas movie. Hey, no, but it's, whoa, a, it's a classic movie. I'm, all I'm saying is there's lots of movies you haven't seen. I'm surprised actually you've seen this one. Oh, yeah. I watch this every year. Dude, yeah. It's yeah. great. It's, yeah. Hey, fine. And you probably won't agree with some of my favorites, so it's fine. No, yeah, I, that that, terrible. Terrible. that yeah. was the most popular answer, too. Yeah. Um, uh, across social media. Oh, so Christmas now I'm vacation. basic. <laughs> yeah, you are basic. Well, not now. You always have been. Uh, David Aspen. Oh, nice Christmas name. And Connor. That's just a boring name. All said the Grinch. <laughs> oh, hey, I think the Grinch came out <laughs> after Elf, did it not? No, it came out before. Oh. <laughs> the one Elf was 2003 Perry. and the Grinch was, I think, 2000. Wow. I've never actually. Yeah, the, the live action Grinch. Yeah. And then there's Chantel did say like, how the Grinch Stole Christmas, the animated one, yep. mm-hmm. which is it was good too. But yeah, I don't know. What Jim Carrey did with the he, Grinch, it was so good. He's incredible, that guy. I have never made it through the Grinch without falling asleep. So See, I've seen the whole monster, I've then. seen the whole movie, but never in one sitting. Oh, you, mm. Well, you should. It's know. it's uh, so good. And you seem I think, proud of that. I yeah. know. It's a weird, like it comes on and I get sleepy. Oh, and but I'm I, so busy. I can't come do this because you're just falling asleep. Oh, the TikTok. Grinch. Yeah. yeah, I... But it is, and who, as you get TikTok. older, like you almost, you relate to the Grinch more and more and more. Bye, Ryan. Bye. <laughs> uh, right, but, and uh, my favorite thing I've ever seen on the internet was like, of course the Grinch was grumpy. You would be too if some guy was singing about what a piece of shit you are every <laughs> three minutes. Yeah, that's not the favorite thing I've seen on the internet. <laughs> I once saw... I'm going to show you some wrapping paper I got from... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, 
But uh, the Grinch is is probably top five for me too. It's it's one I watch every year. I don't know, like, is it, it Walsh? Is it too scary for like young kids? So I think I was in grade seven ish when it came yeah, out. Yeah, so no, was, that's uh, that's okay. Like, kind of five and up, yeah. it wouldn't be that scary are, anymore. Maybe are, even younger. Are you yeah. guys gonna do? Have you seen those videos where the instead of Santa coming in, the Grinch comes in oh, and steals all couple, the presents yeah. and terrifies all the young I kids? I think it's mean to scare your kids mm. with stuff like that when they're little. I think when they're older where they kind of know but they're kind of scared but they know yeah. it's not real like yeah. that's the, the that's prime yeah. spot yeah. but figure that one out mm. yeah if you need a Grinch I'd, yeah I could do it yeah. Kenzie would love it Uncle Bobcat she's, she's coming in clutch you, like, she I doesn't feel, care about presents I feel like you have to see the Grinch first to know yeah. who's coming Make in Kenzie your house. She'll the watch yeah. the Grinch. One and sure. a half year old. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah. Might, actually, it's not bad. I actually asked They're my kids yesterday if they had to choose between the animated Grinch or the live one, and they said that the animated one was funnier. Yeah, oh. for, for kids, I think. And it's shorter. Right, for yeah. The short True. attention span. Uh, this is this is amazing. There's two separate the people, but uh, they both said the same thing. Flory and Lori <laughs> both said, but maybe my favorite movie, A Christmas Story. I think those two are bots. Those are Russian <laughs> bots. I will leave this podcast. You don't that is like the it? single worst Christmas movie <laughs> ever. Mate. Wow. How does that movie You don't go? know shit. I can't remember that movie. It's got a lamp that's a leg and a little boy who's an idiot with his BB gun and gets his eye shot out. It is stupid. He is stupid and I hate it. I don't think I've seen it. We're very different people. <laughs> I know like other than the the act, the unintended racism at the end, which like growing up was a funny scene. I don't know. It's just because it's like an early 80s movie. I don't know. I can get it if it's not your favorite movie, but it is not the worst movie. Get I would give it an adult rewatch, but I hated it you haven't watched it as an adult vehemently as oh. a child because i hated it so much you know there's an off button on that microphone by the way uh you okay let's, let's get into the obvious one although only one person ashley said home alone yeah that's probably which that's, as we look at walsh's home alone christmas yeah. sweater yeah. obviously mm -hmm. that's got to be the one of his but maybe i maybe for a lot of people it's like top five but not yeah. number one but yeah it's top probably top three or top five for me yeah, yeah. And then Mark said Home Alone 2, which I get, I, I bet you it'd be a split a, a split vote on, if you asked everyone, which one's better, one or two? They're close, yeah. 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 Uh, this one, Tracy said, uh, this is going way back, and this is my dad's all-time favorite movie. I had to watch it every Christmas. It's a Wonderful Life, which don't make your kids watch this movie until they're like an adult. <laughs> Because once That's I fair. watched it as an adult and really paid attention, as soon as, if you're eight years old and you see a black and white movie, you're out. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You're done. But like, my, my goodness, Jimmy Stewart, I mm -hmm. think it is, it's actually like such a great movie. And, and now I, I love watching it with my dad every Christmas. Old Jimbo. He always brought it. <laughs> Do you, I know you don't know who that is. I'm not asking. Uh, Elaine and Heather, I've never seen this one, The Holiday. Mm -hmm. Is that the one with Cameron Diaz? Uh, or they, but they switch they houses. They switch houses, or whatever, right? yeah. And, and Jack um, Black is in it. Yeah, it's yeah. with uh, Kate Winslet. Yeah. Oh, Kate Winslet. Yeah. And who's the. Yeah, Cameron Diaz. Yeah, Cameron, Cameron Diaz. Diaz. Oh, this is sounding like a good movie I should watch with my wife. Yes, yeah, no, she would like no, it. Yeah. 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 It's like a nice, like, like Christmas rom I'd like, I'd like it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's fine. You can get your way through it. Okay. Yeah. It's fine. I like rom coms. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This one, I've Kayleen said four Christmases, which uh, I mean, I, is that know. Vince Vaughn? Yeah, Vince Vaughn and Reese Witherspoon. Mm -hmm. As someone who for a while had to do four Christmases, like I get it, but it was I don't know, I didn't think that one was that good. Never watched it. I watched. I don't remember. Like it wasn't yeah. memorable. Yeah, no, it's like not. Vince Vaughn's always entertaining, but yes, I think that was like probably when he's in in his comedy phase. It was, it and was then he dropped that, like yeah. a more a little bit more like that was a little more serious yeah. for him. And yeah. but that's what that's one didn't of those go ones. Well. I would say that's like a freight. Christmas movie, fringe Christmas movie. Right. That's not, definitely not a classic, but uh, Christina said a Muppet Christmas Carol. Mm -hmm. I think I like the Mickey's Christmas Carol better if you've ever seen that, but uh, any any kind of version of Christmas Carol that's like animated or character, whatever, it is usually pretty good. But uh, Amanda said, this is, uh, if you haven't seen this, I know it's on YouTube and you can watch it there, uh, Muppet Family Christmas, which was like a TV special, but they have the Muppets, like from the Muppet Show, and all of the Sesame Street Muppets all in the same oh. house together and it actually like it's it's really good it's uh I probably watched it multiple times a year since I was like six years old on a VHS uh -huh. I was like taped from TV they all sleep in the same house oh yeah and there's yeah. one human and how many bathrooms 
Oh, they didn't get. I they didn't get into that detail. So I guess a lot of Muppets. But the, the Swedish, Muppets use the, the Swedish. Yeah, I don't know. But the Swedish chef tries to cook Big Bird, and then they become friends oh. instead. So it's Snuffleupagus in it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're uh, all, like they're all in it. Honestly, it's it, it's it. uh, nostalgia. I don't know. Like I still get a little weirded out by puppets and and Muppets. But Walsh, I, I'm, at least you're the older of your kids would probably really enjoy it. I don't know. They never really got into and the Muppet Muppets, stuff. Yeah, yeah I oh. think that's a bit of a... Kenzie's big into Sesame Street right okay. now. Mm, yeah, so. what did the Swedish chef say in that movie, Ted? <laughs> I've been Meatballs. fucking doing an impression of him all night trying to reach Shea. Smorgan, Borgen, Flurgen, Cilantro. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's when he's talking about the turkey. He goes, oh, the gerbler, gerbler. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Apparently, I can do a Swedish chef yeah, I did, That's now. way better than what I thought you were going to do. Wow. Uh, Trisha said just all the Hallmark movies. Oh. All of them. Trisha, think, you yep. are going to love yeah, our the, game the tonight. Game out. Well, I think if you when you start on TikTok, you should do a 38-year-old man reviews Hallmark movies. Like, do one every day. I that's, love them. I feel like I could just watch one and give the yeah. same review. 100%. And so so this wasn't this somehow wasn't listed because it's new but uh, we've a lot of talk about hot frosty the movie about it like a, a ice sculpture that comes to life with like Lacey chabert um and dustin ted, ted, from, ted from schitt's creek yeah. the canadian dustin milligan's in it uh boil from brooklyn 99 and doug judy are in it but and you know what there's like a sex doctor was saying hey guys Watch this movie with your with your partner. And what's it called? Hot, Hot Frosty. Frosty. Maybe we'll do like a screening of it somewhere. <laughs> yes. Yes. I love terrible Christmas. Yeah, I love terrible seasonal movies. How do you know it's terrible? Because it's, it's a because it's a Netflix because it's called Hallmark Christmas it's a, movie. It's called Hot, Hot Frosty. Frosty. <laughs> a, but a and wait. snow. There's that, that comes competing with Merry Gentlemen, which is Chad Michael Murray, a guy who starts like a strip review, a nude review to save his hometown or something. So uh, there's a couple of uh, movies. Oh, I didn't write down who said this, but they said A Family Man, which I guess is oh, kind of a Christmas with yeah. Nicolas Cage. Cage. And I thought, about, I'm like, that's actually kind of an underrated movie. It, it, it's pretty good. Nick Cage Where he like, and Tia Leone. Tia Leone, yeah. And he gets like a glimpse of what, like he chose his career over the love of his life. And then uh, Don Cheadle, who's like a Christmas angel, gives him a glimpse of what his life would be like if he stayed married and had kids. It's actually a pretty good movie. Huh. Yeah. Tuggies of the Heartstrings. Yeah. So let's get into two movies that are maybe Christmas movies or not. Let's start with the easier debate. A lot of people say Sound of Music is a yes. Christmas movie. We There's want... nothing about it in no. Christmas, but it's just something you watch at Christmas time. And I'll, I'll tell you, I, it was one of those ones. And I blame Home Improvement is the biggest reason why I never watched Sound of Music because they always made fun of it in there when the mom wanted to watch Sound of Music and they all screamed. <laughs> As an adult, I watched it for the first time. It is probably like a top five favorite movie of all time. Not just Christmas movie, but just movies. My dad, we watch it every Christmas. My, it's my dad's favorite Christmas yeah, movie. It's my mom's favorite one yeah. too. Like she always watches it with her sisters, and I don't know if I've ever actually it's seen. Good. I mean, you have to have an thing. appreciation for music for sure, because it is like an older movie. I, it's just really good, and the music in it is good. Julie Andrews, ugh, mm. love her. And it, it answers the age-old question: How do you solve a problem like Maria? Does it answer it? No, it asks it though. Yeah. That's what I meant. How do you keep a wave upon uh, the sand? I mean, these these are <laughs> these are these are deep uh, questions. Riddles. Yeah. Speaking of deep, let's let's get into the shit now because Samantha and Brandon said Die Hard. Yeah. How is it not a Christmas movie? Thought it is. No, yeah. a lot of people even like I think was it I can't remember. Bruce Willis commented. I think he said it's not a Christmas movie. I'd rather hear from Reginald Bell Johnson too to to on uh, whether he thinks it's a Christmas but it takes place at Christmas time. Let's it's automatically him. a Christmas movie. Let's get him on the pod. Could you imagine that would oh oh Carl Winslow on our oh, podcast? Oh my god, I have so many questions. <laughs> like what? Yeah, no, I it's a hundred percent. How are you? The Santa Claus starts <laughs> out, you? Tim Allen's at a Christmas party. Yeah. Christmas movie. Christmas well, movie. Well, okay, but he plays Santa <laughs> Claus, which is the central fixture point. of Christmas. Point. I'm sure there's an argument to be made that like, Bruce Willis yeah. was a Santa Claus figure saving Christmas. I mean, there is a there is a point in if, the, in the sound movie where he does have a Santa hat yeah. on. Lots of parallels. No, it's a, does anyone here here on it like honestly? Don't be afraid to say it, but think that it's not a Christmas movie. No, no argument I, here. I would agree. It's a Christmas yeah. movie. Kevin, you haven't said anything in a while. Have you watched it? <gasps> I don't need to answer that. To be fair, I've only saw Die Hard for like maybe eight years ago for the first time. Like 
So uh, watch it. This I, it's a great Christmas movie. Yeah. All right. Well, we're gonna have to take some of these beers and have a movie night. Yeah, and maybe maybe we won't all watch Hot Frosty together because it could it could get weird. <laughs> but uh, and here's this one. Uh, speaking of Die Hard, now this is it took this the movie recently that took Die Hard and like it was very purposely a Christmas movie, but an action movie. Uh, if you haven't seen Violent Night with David Harbour, oh, oh. my gosh, yeah. Yeah, it's so good. I like David Harbour. And do you like the song Something About Christmas Time by uh, Brian Adams? Oh. They, they use it in that movie in the best way. But uh, that's what, two years ago, I think yeah, it came it's out? A nice, yeah, it's a nice uh, twist on a uh, like theme that has been beaten to death with rom-coms and family yeah. and... If you have a respect for violence, you're going to yeah. love this movie. And, and no yeah. one ever sees David Harbour as like a down on his luck, kind of not sure what he's going to do with his life authority figure. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a completely yeah, new role for him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, this is one that wasn't on there and it's not that good, but for some reason, I love it. We were just talking about Vince Vaughn. I don't know why I like Fred Claus so much. Oh, fuck, Riley. We made it so long. <laughs> God, he was shocked that anyone liked the movie Fred Claus. <laughs> Maybe it's because the name is so dumb is why I like it. But I, I thought it was actually a pretty good movie. Like with Paul Giamatti, like Ke it's, well, Kevin it's, Spacey. It's so smart because they never talk about Santa. They always talk about Mrs. Claus, but they never talk about Santa's brother. Mm. And obviously, mm. he probably has a brother. So, yeah, yeah I Fred. I feel like they. I feel like the uh, there's area for a Sarah Claus movie or like like <laughs> Sarah Claus. like obviously like he's a got sister a sister, oh. sister yeah. Yeah. right there's yeah. a couple ways they could go down with that oh maybe that's the sequel yeah. uh, and no one my another one of my favorites and it like the 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 Bumble the Abominable Snowman gave me so many nightmares but I still love the claymation yeah. Rudolph the Red nosed Reindeer with yeah. Yukon Cornelius yeah. oh my god oh is that 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 classic it's like the yeah. old school. oh yeah yeah. That's a good one. That one yeah. was, that movie was actually scary when you were yeah. a kid. Yeah. 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 I do agree. That one, yeah. And just the animation was so unique. And even today, yeah. like that, it's still unique. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. just it's just so good. The Island of Misfit Toys, like it's relatable. Uh, the, any of those old ones, like I said, it's the, like it's almost like the older the movie, the better it is for some reason. Uh, the other one, uh, Walsh, I think I convinced you, uh, we talked about this like on the third ever episode of the podcast, but growing up, we had a cassette of Blue Toad the Christmas Elf, the best like theme song ever. I watched this with my nephew and he was like three and it, it actually, the polar bear gave him nightmares. So I felt bad. But if you have a kid like, again, like five or above, it is, oh, it's so good. Yeah. I found it on YouTube after yeah. we, you told me that. And I think it's like half an hour, 40 yeah. minutes. And, and how good is that song? I, it was awesome. Yeah. Uh, honestly, it brought back a ton of memories and my kids didn't mind it. So it sounds like a win. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like we've done this exact same deer call. No, we, we, so on that, we talked about it, but we didn't do a deer, like asking other people. Oh, it was just yeah. internally. Yeah. Wow. Uh, do you have, is anything on there? That yeah. Yeah. Mentioned? There's yeah. a couple. There's a couple. Uh, uh, Jack Frost with the, Michael. The actual, the horror one or the no, one with Michael Keaton? Michael Keaton. My yeah. parents, my dad accidentally rented one. me Jack Frost, but it was like the horror movie one where the snowman killed people. Uh, I was, and yeah, I was yeah, like yeah, eight yeah, years yeah, old. Yeah. That was yeah. the one. Hey dad, I'm not going outside yeah. anymore. <laughs> yeah. I know. I didn't know that yeah. existed, but yeah, uh, yeah the one with uh yeah, exactly. Randy Keaton, showgirls teaches them the J that. shot which I don't think that's what a thing but <laughs> a jump shot no oh, it's no, a hockey, hockey. yeah, yeah. But better than the triple D oh yeah it was way yeah. better triple D but <laughs> come on the triple D isn't even a deke it's a slap shot yeah. from the blue line yeah, that, no that was in cute. Iceland yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah anyway uh so that one that was okay that's but a good cheesy like kid yeah but the the main one I think we missed was jingle all the way yeah yeah I had yeah. that I mean, yeah, notable. Yeah. I had that on my notable. Yeah, edition, I mean, with Schwarzenegger and Sinbad, yeah. does it yeah. get more Christmas oh. than that? Turbo it's Man. Tur <laughs> Turbo Man. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that, that, that's one of those like cheesy it's and so a little cheesy, cheap, but it's a good type but of it's cheesy. Good. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. it's good. So that, those were the two that came to my mind. Anything with our, any comedy with Arnold Schwarzenegger and it was automatically yeah. good because it was just like a prank on himself. Yeah. 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 That's a good one though. Oh, thank you. Good luck topping those. Yeah, I mean, it's, I got nothing that wasn't on the list, oh, really. Wow. It's Christmas Vacation, yeah. it's Sound of Music, and then it's whatever terrible holiday movies are on, I will watch yeah. them. I've seen <laughs> three. <laughs> Give me shit about Christmas list. Vacation. And you have, like that. So the, you haven't seen, seen A Christmas Story? No, haven't seen that. Home Alones? You've obviously I've seen, seen The Home Alones. Yeah. I've seen The Grinch, Christmas Vacation, and Elf. Santa Claus? 
Uh, and Santa Claus, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I, all right. So we're. Uh, I think oh, I think you would like a Christmas story, actually. Why is that? I don't. It's just we have very similar sense of humor. Uh, I fair. think so. Yeah. Um, I do remember as a kid the animated like Frosty the Snowman movie. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. That yeah, was yeah. always one of my favorites. When, the when he put swallowed the hat his on whistle, it, whenever he came alive <laughs> and he said Happy yeah. Birthday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you thought, oh, maybe I could swallow a whistle and whistle. Kind of irresponsible, I guess that movie. But... <laughs> Man, children are so impressionable. Yeah. And mm. precious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so my top three, if anyone cared, would be no no particular order. Home Alone, Santa Claus, and Elf. So those yeah. are kind of like I think most people would say those are mm-hmm. like kind of three staples. Some notable ones I think that we haven't just talked about yet. Bad Santa. Oh uh, yeah. 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 Okay, that's good. And a newer one that we just watched the other day was Christmas Chronicles with Kurt Russell. Oh, yeah, there's two of them. Actually, yeah, there's two. Oh, that and, one's and, not bad. That yeah, one's not the, bad. Like it's kind of like a new age it's almost, Santa Claus. It's like Violent Night, but without the violence. Yeah. It's like a, Santa's like having an existential crisis. Like, Kurt Russell actually makes a great Santa. Yeah. Though. It, it was it was good. So um, Blitzkin is yeah. Santa. <laughs> yeah. I'm here for it. And, and then uh, one I'm sure we all watched and I watched a lot growing up. Uh, the Peanuts. Oh, Charlie oh, Brown. Yeah, Christmas. Charlie yeah. Brown Christmas. Yeah, yeah. That was uh, so like a, the Scrooge wasn't on there with Bill Murray. That's I think that's one people would be like, oh, it's good, but no one ever mentions as their favorite. Uh, Love Actually, which, oh, yeah, which that's, one that's is Christmas, actually a really a good. I, I avoided watching it for so long and realizing like, it's actually it's an ensemble cast. It's like and I've said this, I think I even said this the last time we talked about Christmas, but for all the tough guy roles that Liam Neeson has done, he's never been more manly than in Love Actually, taking mm-hmm. care of his uh, his late wife's son, his stepson, mm-hmm. and like mm-hmm. the best dad ever. True. Uh, what else? A Nightmare Before Christmas. Like that's, I mean, it's a Christmas and Halloween yeah. movie. It's dual purpose. Yeah. Uh, you said Bad Santa. How the fuck did no one say Ernest Saves Christmas? Oh, yeah. I did think about Ernest. Yeah. I did. I did. <laughs> yeah. I think about him at Halloween. I think oh, about yeah, the Halloween. Yeah, I scared you guys. That one was scary as shit. Yeah. That, is yeah. scary. that one gave me Booger lips. Nightmares. Yeah. Scared stupid. Yeah. yeah. That was a lot. Kind of blocked Ernest. But, and, from but then my he memory. saved. But then he saved Christmas. He yeah. Faced his fears at Halloween. Got his shit together. Pulled up his socks and saved Christmas. Like the ultimate underdog story. Yeah. Also, no one, no one like, believed in him, and then he just comes through. Jim Varney. Oh yeah. You can get it. I feel you like fuck with that. I'd fuck with that. <laughs> yeah, you would. Yeah, I would. <laughs> did, you, did Jim Varney do anything else besides? Not uh, he was Slinky Dog in, uh, <laughs> oh, in Toy Story. I see that now. Until he passed away, and yeah. then the guy who was uh, uh, oh, I forget his name now. Chet. Ernest was Slinky Dog in Toy Story. Yeah, I yeah. the first I one or two, that. and then the guy who took over was the guy with the raspy voice in like all the Adam Sandler movies. Oh, what's his name? Oh. Blake. I don't care. You just Blake. blew my mind about Ernest. And uh, and he was like Sean's dad in Boy Meets World. Uh, oh, oh, the guy, the farmer oh. guy. Farmer and, uh, friend farmer from the, the water boy. Yeah. Uh, why can't oh, I think of his yeah. name? He's, yeah, he's. <laughs> that was uh, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, 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 that guy. That's the guy. Yeah, yeah. And he was the new slinky <laughs> dog voice. But uh, hey, on that great note, fun fact. Uh, wow. Thank you, as always, to everyone who participated in our dear call. Uh, and just like the last time we talked about movies, He's a long list for the athletes to uh, catch up on to get. I don't like these deer calls. Catch up with all of us. You want to play Mad Gabs instead? Oh, mad it's Gabs, not a deer a call. That's a title. game. Uh, but as always, keep your eyes open on social media, uh, Instagram and Facebook for our next deer call. Uh, keep commenting for your chance to win a gift card. All right, so we're going to move. We're going to keep talking about Christmas movies, kind of, sort of. A uh, favorite game is back, Aaron. I think actually. The last time we did this was our return episode a year ago. Yeah. So keeping tradition, we broke a stool tonight. <laughs> Let's do, well, this is a Netflix or nonsense slash primer pretend, but a Christmas spin on it. So what are we playing tonight? We're playing Hallmark or Hooey. Hooey means nonsense. Yeah. Oh, I thought yeah. it was. He the... was like, "Oh, Huey and the Blowfish, my favorite band." <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I thought that was Huey, the... Dewey, and Louie, yeah. <laughs> the brothers. Yeah. Oh, isn't that a Christmas movie? Duck, well, Duckwing. Uh, Darkwing? <laughs> no. Darkwing. I think there's a Scrooge McDuck. Yeah. Which well, is like they're all part of that. Uh, they're all yeah, part it's of It's been the so long. Darkwing Mickey Duck, Christmas though, Carol. come on. Is oh, great. Duck, oh, yeah. Duck, Duckwing Don't Duck. Don't get me started on theme songs. Yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. That was a good Anyways. Okay. 
How's that theme song? So we're doing we're doing Hallmark or Huey, pretty self-explanatory, right? Yes, these are uh, almost exclusively uh, movies that uh, Hallmark is putting out mm-hmm. this season. This, okay, so good. it's not as wild as some of our previous, oh, yeah. but still utter nonsense. And yeah, and we decided. I don't. I don't think any kids. Li- but anyways, just in case any kids are listening, we decided the loser of this podcast is going to have to contact Santa mm-hmm. and be Santa's personal agent to go visit a. A couple of our friends' houses and their kids. And if there's a, a tie for last place, uh, whoever's in last place has to uh, also make sure that Santa has an elf with him. Love it. Uh, some of these have been edited for a bit of brevity, but okay. they're still long. Sorry. All right. So here we go. This, I guess, the first ever official Hallmark or Hui. To prevent her family from canceling the Chamberlain Family Christmas Olympics, Jessie lies and says she's inviting a date to the long-standing holiday tradition. She meets Brian on a dating app, and he agrees to spend the holiday with her and her family. Nice As guy. the celebrations continue, Jessie must work to keep all her story straight and say Save her date with Brian. Oh. Title, Twas the Date Before Christmas. Oh. Oh. I tell you what, there's a lot of, yeah, get, a, get on those dating apps around Christmas time. <laughs> oh my goodness. Anyways. All right. Hallmark or Hooey? Hallmark. It is in fact Hallmark. Everyone got it? Mm-hmm. Wow. Good job. Uptight New York executive Ashley Lee finds black mold in her apartment the week before Christmas. Oh no. <laughs> These guys are sold. <laughs> yeah, we're Synced in. up. We're in. <laughs> That's because I'm sure there's black mold yeah. in your house. Yeah. That's probably why you're so, yeah. so sympathetic. <laughs> Unfortunately, toxic mold specialist Tate Wallace can't start the removal job until his crew returns from vacation oh. after Christmas. Oh. Taking pity on her, Tate invites Ashley to stay with his family at their tree farm upstate. <laughs> As she as she slowly lets her guard down, Ashley realizes maybe the Christmas spirit was inside her heart all along. Oh, the movie oh. title, Christmas Upstate. <laughs> There's a lot to unpack <laughs> yeah. there. There's a lot. Okay. okay. Hooey. Hooey. It's Hooey. Yeah. Oh. I thought there's no way you wrote something that long. <laughs> I, I just, just thought wait. I thought that movie said too good to be true. Yep. And the title, the title, I that they could have done better with the title. Mm. I w- thought w- about playing on that's mold. That's why yeah. I thought that's why I thought if it was a, like a pun on mold, I would have thought there's no way it's real. I you I did the opposite. Kevin, yeah. did you did Yeah, you it, it almost it started out hooey and did then it almost mark? got to the point where it was like okay this is <laughs> this too sounds, fake yeah. to yeah. to be fake that it yeah. like has to be real Bucking, so these two are up one on us yeah that, okay. buckle up guys there's some insanity both my own and hallmarks any beefer in any of these no, well close oh Chief's super fan Alana tries to win the Fan of the Year award as a Christmas gift for her family, falling in love with someone in the Chief's front office along the way. Title: Holiday Touchdown: A Chief's Love Story. Oh. Is this is this inspired by anything or uh. You'll find out in a second. Mm. Chief's love story. Hallmark. It's Hallmark. Oh, I, they it's made, too hot right it's, now. It's actually, yeah. I think, is it the, it's the fan, like the fan engagement coordinator. Yeah. Or something. We actually, I have like, we talked about this on the radio. There you go. If you listen, oh, if you listen to my morning show, hey, you would know. Yeah. If you watch, I've watched one of these movies yeah. already. You, I thought oh, you actually, said they're, I thought you said the they're coming out. Yeah. No, it started. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so three, two, two, two. Yeah. Okay. And there is one that is a must watch. I will let you know when we get there. Okay. When a priceless antique nutcracker set to be auctioned at the Warby family Christmas charity goes missing in an unfortunate suitcase swap, it's up to exacting event planner Lottie Morgan and the free spirited heir to the Warby dynasty, Tristan, to track it all down, all while capturing the heart and spirit of Christmas. The movie Operation Nutcracker. It sounds like a, a Christmas good, that's knives a good title. out. Almost. <laughs> that's a good title. Who? Hallmark. 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 Oh. They made it. I'm a four. You're four, four, three, two, two. two. Went from first to last in two <laughs> questions. You're already. Okay. You actually like. You're already dressed like Santa's agent. So <laughs> you're you're, you're set. good to go. Next question. <laughs> It's the final straw when Becca comes home to find her bumbling boyfriend has flooded the house trying to help with a leak under the sink. Realizing there has to be more to life, she packs up and heads to the city, trading her 
it, trading in her ugly Christmas sweater for pencil skirts and high heels. This holiday season, will Becca need a Christmas miracle or realize she already has everything she needs? Title, Christmas in Heels. Oh, I need like a seven second countdown. <laughs> that sounds... Oh, good, uh-huh. jo- good job. Yeah. Who? It is who. Oh, okay, good job. Because that's. Fuck the patriarchy. That was almost like too well written <laughs> yeah. to be a Hallmark <laughs> one. I just, we need the. Anytime there's not someone who returns to their hometown to find like their high school rival or high school love, I just don't think it's a real well, Hallmark. Well, I movie. went, that's why I went opposite. Yeah, that's why Leave the small town, leave the bumbling boyfriend. So it's now what? Five, four, three, three. Okay. Yeah. When Olivia, a successful interior designer, finds an old letter from from Santa promising she'll meet the love of her life by Christmas Eve and that his name will be Nick. She's stunned to meet not one, but three guys named Nick. Olivia also finds herself drawn to her charming co-worker Chris, throwing her magical Christmas quest into question. With the clock ticking towards Christmas Eve, Olivia embarks on a heartwarming and humorous journey to uncover her true soulmate. The movie Santa Tell Me. Olivia's got oh. quite the roster going. Good mm-hmm. for her. Saint Nick and Chris Kringle. The Santa look, if you're if Santa's uh, writing a letter to you, like Santa's saying I'd fuck with that. Hallmark. <laughs> 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 oh, Hallmark. Oh, oh god, he's they all sound like hooey to me. I thought that sounded so good. This has got to be a yeah. movie. Yeah. yeah. I, thought it sounded, I, thought, yeah. I thought it sounded too I think good. I just confused myself. I don't know what I just said a word. I didn't know what I thought. So now six. Six. Four? Four, four, three. Have you got one wrong yet? No. Oh, wow. This guy watches a lot. <laughs> I should redeem myself. <laughs> yeah. An archaeologist and her ex-husband, an expert in ancient Norse languages, are sent to Iceland at Christmas time to search for the legendary treasure of the Yule Lads. When others join in the hunt, the pair find themselves swept into a thrilling adventure as they race to keep it from falling into the wrong hands. Oh. The movie, The Christmas Quest. Oh, I don't. <laughs> Sounds good. I, I don't put this much thought into any other aspect of my <laughs> life, but I'm like, bra- like my brain is going a million miles a minute right now. Hallmark. 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 And Get that fucked. is on my ma- my fucked. must watch because I love the Icelandic Yule Lads and they have crazy names like Is that sheep- a, that's a real thing? Though? Yes. Okay. So that's where I wasn't sure if that's I something went you would write to or not. where the Yule Lads troll mother lives. Oh. So what you're Iceland. saying to the audience is you will love this movie. I would not say that. <laughs> okay. I, <see. laughs> I read the Yule Lads to Kenzie at what Christmas. Is, so, so the Yule you, Lads had a troll movie? mother? I yes, wrong. because they are half troll and they're like spoon licker and sheep warrior and like they have mm. crazy names and every night 12 nights before christmas one of them will come and you're supposed to leave out an appropriate treat and then they'll leave you a potato or a of treat course, of course that's okay only you would consider a potato a treat <laughs> <laughs> that's okay it's called the christmas quest yeah so we got what seven five four three I think so. You can't lose. I hope, so. yeah. I hope not. <laughs> you make uh, you want to make you the might best as well little elf for the. Yeah, you still have to do your pumpkin picture though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Three more. Kate North, the owner of a struggling Santa school, and her instructor Dan must help an amnesia-stricken Santa Claus regain his memories to save Christmas and hopefully her school as well. There's a lot at stake this year. Kate's school needs to best the rival Saint Nicholas School or be forced to close their doors. And Nick. Santa Claus needs to remember who he is or the fate of Christmas might be at stake. Title the Santa class. (laughs) You you literally every single Hallmark movie buzzword was in that. How'd we get to number eight and only hear amnesia for the first time? I know. It sounds like a Liam Neeson (laughs) movie. Oh man. Okay. Hooey. It is a real movie. Oh. Oh. But you said I'm watching it. You said he must find out who he is, and all I heard is who he. <laughs> and I was like, oh, <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's a hint. That's a hint. <laughs> I'm not. I that just good. thought the Santa Christmas class, class was like the Hallmark. Stupid. But yeah, but home, no, Hallmark's oh. not that clever. Or the Santa class. What, yeah. yeah. So oh. it's still same score. Okay. All right. So it's it's basically we got two left. Yeah. Okay, so it's still kind of between the three of us here. Yeah, five, four, three, <laughs> seven. Up. And, well, yeah, you're, <laughs> yeah, I know. whatever, whatever. You got your first one wrong. Newly single Kurt and his friends decide to go Christmas spaceshipping, driving around their <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Driving around their small town with the headlights off, but Christmas lights twinkling inside. But their festive drive goes awry when they crash in the local gravel pit and realize they may not be the only spaceship in town. Oh, Will so Christmas this year be truly out of this world? Wow. The title, oh One Starry Night. Oh! I thought, oh my God, is this like an alien Christmas movie? And then, oh no, spaceship things are real. And then they brought in the fucking spaceship anyways. And now I don't know what the three. This makes me, no, just before you count, this makes you just realize like how many genres are untouched yeah. in the Christmas movie and well, not just Hallmark, for good like, reason. Fucking Hollywood, throw some yeah. big money behind these. Mm -hmm. Maybe they have. Hooey. Hallmark. It's Huey. Yes. Oh, I we read, all get that? Oh. <laughs> I read a Reddit thread where they were talking about things that you thought were illegal but aren't turning the interior lights on in a car. And everybody was like, oh, yeah, my parents mm -hmm. told me that. And then this, but it's not illegal. And then this guy wrote, we used to go space shipping where <laughs> we would turn off our headlights mm -hmm. and leave the interior lights on. Like that. that that wasn't funny. illegal like, and i went everybody was like inside. that was very illegal yeah. <laughs> just the idea of these like bumble butts <laughs> driving around oh. if i saw a car though with its like lights off and just christmas <laughs> yeah. lights inside i would i would that'd be channel fucking, that'd my be cool. inner ryan london and say those guys get it yeah. <laughs> man they would yeah. it's pretty, yeah, that's but it's illegal cool. don't so, do that so last question we're at what do you have now? seven seven six five four it's so lund it's between you and strybosh no matter what you're going to be organizing a Santa visit. It just Kenzie depends on if you have a, a, an elf helper or not. Well, if, if there's going to be an elf helper if, there. If, I, you, if yeah. I tie, I might be the helper or the Santa. Well, you, no, you, mean you're, you guys are the agents and you have to bring in the Santa and the elf. I don't think children are listening to this. You know, I, well, what if you, but Kevin is. Touche. Yeah. yeah. I write right. him letters every year. <laughs> All right, I'll guess. Could you write it to Santa or Satan? <laughs> <laughs> I think there's Rob. actually there's a movie that's just coming out with Jack Black where this this poor dyslexic kid writes a letter to Satan and Satan shows up instead of Aww. Santa and Jack Black is Satan. Jack Black is I Satan. love it. He sends it to the North Lord. That's awesome. <laughs> Anyways. All right. Number awesome. 10. Good Samaritan Sarah Fitzpatrick has a fatal accident just before Christmas oh, and no. finds herself in the lobby before the gates of heaven. Oh, <laughs> There's a lobby? Oh. Yeah. Certain that she will be left in. No. Certain that she will be let in. She is shocked to find that her name is not on the reservation list. <gasps> However, she is granted the chance to return to Earth as an angel in training with the requirement to help a soul in need. Sarah has the 12 days before Christmas to secure her her place on the list, leaving her in the race for her afterlife. How Sarah got her wings. Oh, oh Ryan got his groove back. That is a well written. Hey, I think you two file. should have to close your eyes though, so you can't read lips. <laughs> Hallmark. That is a 2015 Hallmark movie. Yeah. <laughs> the only out of season one, but I needed to throw in another batshit insane movie. <laughs> that how was many, nuts. How many Hallmark movies are on 32. the list? 32. Oh, on sorry. List. There's 32 this year. Uh, that was... Um, <laughs> and that's not even a Netflix one. That's yeah, just that's Hallmark. Just Hallmark. Uh, seven. I wrote three. Fuck. I went the other way with that. I was like, I kept on thinking, oh, there's got to be a hooey. There's got to be a hooey. Yeah, yeah, I did three hooeys in the rest so of the They're so outrageous. Yeah. It, and that's the thing. And your hooies are very well written. Yeah. Right? yeah. But uh, yeah. Hey, well, Ryan Lund better get Santa on. Yeah, I better write him a, write him a letter. <laughs> Hopefully Canada. S-A-N-T-A. -S Hopefully that Canada poster is over soon. <laughs> Kenzie's a year and a half old. Satan showing up would be fine too. So wow. get You've already made her cry before. So even. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't have Satan's number. I and believe I don't you do. have Santa's number. I'm going to have to write him. letters. Yeah. Yeah. I think you. Now here's get a hold the question: Will Kenzie shake Santa's hand? Absolutely. I've never seen a baby like a one and a half year old. She's that does a business. Hands baby. She's a business baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, she loves to be on Zoom calls at work, and she shakes hands. Yeah. Daycare is doing something right, even though they let her bite everyone. Yeah. Wow, that's, just, <laughs> that's just good negotiation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's it, pretty much. Well, the that's it. <sighs> Fuck. Burger, burger, Cilantro. <laughs> Well, Aaron, thanks again for uh, Hallmark or Hooey. It's always a lot of fun. And I, you know what? I probably will watch a couple of those movies. Kevin, those have to go at the bottom of your list, though, because there's some like major movies you have to watch first. But uh, that just about does it for this episode. So as always, let's wrap things up with everyone's final thoughts. Silent <laughs> night, holy night. <laughs> You <laughs>
actually don't know the words to Silent Night. Oh, no. <laughs> I got the yeah, I got the basic. I got the like the just the notes it. were great. The the tune was not. Oh, oh well, Christmas is ruined. So. I think it's saved. Yeah. <laughs> you guys should have seen should me we... last year. I don't think I told this story yet, but <laughs> last Christmas it was like a Friday night or I know, it was Friday or Saturday night, probably around like eight p.m. I was hammered. <laughs> Close. I popped some edibles. <laughs> and this... Hey, that's legal. And this family shows up at my house to Carol. No. So, of course, they answer the door because I had no. no idea who it was. And they start caroling and it's like a family of five with like three young kids. Playing oh. guitars? Yeah, there was one guitar. And then like these three young kids. Uh-huh. And Which then you don't see enough of anymore. So good for them. Yeah, no, I, I was caught off guard completely, but I was really paranoid. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So this, uh, this, like the kids are probably like between the ages of like six to 12. And like the 10 year old was like doing her own thing off to the oh, side. Oh. And then I got really paranoid thinking, oh my God. She's trying to distract me. <laughs> is someone coming? Is in pickpocket? Is, so, is someone coming around the back of my house to rob me right now? This is an excellent plan. That should be a Hallmark movie. That should be. So I, I stayed there for the whole song, yeah, and then Miss Crooks. And then after they were done, I went and checked every room in my house to make sure no one <laughs> snuck in. But that, like, that's like a true that. story. That's, that's a true. story. And you know what? It's it's not. I found out accidentally. It's not hard to scare you into thinking people are in the house because one day I heard you like walking around upstairs all night and. And then you came home and i was like what the hell are you and then so he's going peeking behind the shower curtain uh-huh. in this extra bathroom and that so you know what and yeah once you have an edible i get it no the paranoia sometimes yeah. is a little yeah. too real i get so it it was so merry christmas merry everyone christmas. Yeah. Yeah. uh yeah no i hope everybody has a great holiday season to all of the parents out there you're doing great it's okay you're doing Better your best. Better than Aaron if your kid's not biting anyone. Honestly, take the wins that you can get. So, everybody have a great Christmas. And um, I'm excited to watch some Christmas movies with you guys. I'm going to watch the same Christmas movies that I do every year. <laughs> Maybe some additional ones. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, don't watch Blue Toes. I think it'll scare you. You're not old enough yet. Yeah. I, that was actually probably the one at the top of my list. Because <laughs> yeah. you, you talk about it every single year. And it, it is. sounds it's pretty Sounds pretty good. And it's like a good 30 to 40 minutes. So I don't have to commit like a full evening to it. That's doing deep. I give it the Ryan Lund treatment beforehand. If you you catch my Mm. drift. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Get paranoid. Yeah. 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 Real paranoid. I mean, I I don't like that. (laughs) (laughs) Whoa. You're getting all choked up. Yeah. (laughs) You're catching what Aaron's got. (laughs) I think I've got the black lung pop. (laughs) Go ahead. Is that Zoolander starring Mickey (laughs) Mouse? Like, we'll see so Merry goes, Christmas. If there's, yeah. if there's one other movie on that list that I need to see, what is it? Hot Frosty. No. Mm. Oh, uh, Christmas Story. Ugh. I just think so you could settle this between Yeah, Aaron and I, I need to watch it again. Yeah, you do. Okay. Yeah. And I'll no. watch Christmas Vacation again. Okay. There we go. No, I right. think you've watched yeah. something from this millennia. Okay, yeah. shitter's full, can, Kevin. Can, I, can I say Merry Christmas? No. No. Okay. You can say Happy Holidays, though. Okay, Happy Holidays. No, I just, um, you know, I know Christmas, a lot of stuff is like presents and all that kind of stuff. But I think over the years, I've learned more and more. It's just about like experiences with your family and your yeah. friends and, you know, get out there and enjoy the outdoor rinks and the toboggan hills and... You know, walking around Bower Ponds and all that kind of stuff. And hopefully everyone's just able to take some time off and yeah. hang out with their family and friends and loved ones. So. And start doing Christmas shit again. Like the, like go carol or whatever. Yeah, and or, do that. or just drive around looking at Christmas. Christmas lights. lights yeah. yeah, we yeah, didn't that's even like. a fun one. Yeah, there's that uh, annual map or whatever that yeah. the, the yeah. guy and his dad put out, which is incredible. I think it's like six yeah. hours to do the whole thing, oh. but you can like break it off in chunks. But yeah, I mean, Red Deer is a beautiful place this time of year. So enjoy it. And when it's cold out, stay home and watch Blue Toes. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, okay. uh, let's wrap things up because uh, unsurprisingly, this went pretty long. But that does bring to an end another episode of Oh Dear. Uh, thank you to our presenting sponsor, Bose Bar and Stage, and to Riley for having us once again at Communal Creative Studios. Doubling down today, too, doing a, a Lund employee. It's, it's definitely been a long day, but it was fun uh, for uh, me, Lund, and Riley. And of course, thank you to our episode sponsor, Cilantro and Chive. And 
again to Riley K for coming in and joining us once again. Uh, always so much fun uh, when he's in here. If you haven't already, make sure you're following us on social media, Instagram, Facebook, even TikTok. Uh, we'd really, really appreciate it if you subscribed to our YouTube channel because uh, the athlete has shit the bed on our, uh, our fake follows. But even if you don't watch a single second of our content, uh, we're still going to appreciate it and we'd understand if you don't want to watch any of it. And, huh. I really wrote a lot for a guy who cannot talk tonight. But uh, if you're a newer listener or viewer, uh, you can find all the previous episodes of Oh Dear on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, really anywhere else you get your podcasts. While you're, you're there, uh, I'm just going to push through that one. They know what I was saying. Uh, why not leave us a review? It's been like two years. I think we've had one new review in two years. So it'll be nice to get some new ones on there. And uh, you're building this something, aren't you? Okay. Uh, that's it. That's all. Uh, thank you for tuning in once again. And hey, Thank you for four uh, pretty not bad years of oh dear. We didn't. We kind of got away from that subject, but uh, four years minus a, a year hiatus in between. Either way, uh, it's been an amazing four years, uh, and uh, no plans right now to to end things after this year. So for Kevin Walsh, Ryan Lund, coworker Aaron, the athlete Kevin Strybosch, I'm Ted Emmett. Have a safe and happy holiday season, and we'll see you next time. Oh 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 oh! Merry Christmas. From the Count from Sesame Street, apparently. <laughs>